Hello there, gang, and welcome to a very special episode of Displaying Model Behavior. I am going to set a Guinness World Record, an unofficial Guinness World Record that I don't think anyone's even measuring. I am going to do the world record number of action figure reviews in one video because I have got such a huge archive of action figure footage, I'm going to put it to good use. So pour yourself a cup of tea, sit down, get nice and comfortable because we're going to be in this for the long haul. The Guinness World Record most action figure reviews in one video. Let's kick this off. But before we do, if you want to support the channel and get yourself a badass t-shirt, almost fell over there, you can go over to the channel sponsor, Into the AM. You can click the link in the description below. You get 10% off your order. They do bundle deals, three shirts for 60 bucks, minus the 10% as well you're getting from Model Behavior. If you do that, it really helps out the channel. They will keep on sponsoring me and you will get some badass t-shirts in your display and also in your display. It's not a display, Dave, it's a wardrobe. Not everything is about action figures. And if you do place an order with them, send me a little copy of your proof of purchase and I will draw you a little bit of bespoke model behavior art. Nothing digital, not gonna email it. I'm gonna sketch it out by hand, put it in an envelope and post it off to you wherever you are in the world just as a thank you for supporting the channel. And don't worry, I'm terrible at art, but it's the thought that counts. All right, gang, enough with the sponsor. We got a whole bunch of action figure reviews. So let's talk about them. Santa from Four Horsemen. I mean, what else is there to say? It's Santa Claus. It's, it's a brilliantly realized Santa Claus. I just, I, I love this. This just radiates Christmas joy. In a world of mean, badass, demonic action figures, this is Santa Claus, and I just adore him. He comes with so much, so many accessories, toys, presents, different posing options, soft goods. Just the more I talk about him, the more I think, spirit of Christmas, man, turns me into a big kid. I adore this. This is genuinely, genuinely one of my all-time favorite action figures. Redhorn from Zezray Studios. Oh. <laughs> a giant red rhinotaur. Yeah, I'm coining the term rhinotaur. This guy deserves a name all of his own. This thing is absolutely amazing. From the Zezray combatants fight for glory line. I was trying to remember the name of the whole thing there. It's a word salad, but my goodness, that salad tastes delicious. This metaphor is going a bit ridiculous now. Nonetheless, though, this guy just amazing. Mezco Spider-Man 2099, an absolutely gorgeous figure that is massively let down by the fact that he is pretty much wearing a baby's romper suit. I, I, I love the design of Spider-Man 2099 and Mezco often do such a great job of reinterpreting costumes to make them look better in their style by adding panels and lining and different things that really bring it to life and separate the cloth goods and they didn't do any of that on this figure. So it just looks like Spider-Man's wearing a onesie, a very unthreatening onesie, like he's about to go to bed in his jammies, which is such a shame because everything else about the figure is amazing. In fact, it's so good that even though he's got this ridiculous looking baby's romper suit, I still absolutely love it. It's still a banger. Dark Beast from the Age of Apocalypse. This is Marvel Legends doing what they do best, which is doing a very inconsistent line when it comes to quality. But Dark Beast is one of the best AOA figures they've done. So much detail. They took their original Beast figure and then threw everything on there. And what's great is that they took the Dark Beast design and they didn't think, how can we sort of simplify this, make it a little cheaper to make? No, they went all in. He's got the braids, the plaits, the little ornamentations, the jewelry, the metallic leg things, whatever those are, they went all in with this figure and it shows I love it. An absolute highlight from the AOA wave. Robocane. This is actually a bit of a cheat. This is a model kit from Motoroid, but you know what happens to a model kit when it's all put together? It becomes a wicked action figure. I'm still waiting for a complete painted proper 1 12th scale cane. I don't know if we're ever going to get it, but in the meantime, this, this is awesome. Because also, it was said by Phil Tippett, the man who designed this, that he specifically created it in a form and fashion that would make it really hard for people to bootleg that design and make their own ones. It's not until this year now where actually action figure and design technology has come along far enough that we can do it. And it's been done 
and it's real nice. NECA Grimsword. I just love the look and aesthetic of an action figure that's kind of designed to look like an action figure, if you know what I mean. Like, this looks like it was designed by a child in the 80s, sketching out, like, what they think a, a cool barbarian bad knight character would be. That's it, because it's kind of bonkers. Like, the design is kind of silly, but it's brilliantly silly. I dig it so, so much with the metallic paint as well and everything NECA put into this. Yeah, this is really, really great. They call him Deadpool. He's hella fast. Came to murk the bad guys and get some ass. Got blades for days. Got guns galore. Got combo moves. He evades them all with bear traps and hand grenades. Pull a pistol like a maniac right in your face. Popping off caps, leave a trail of dust. Sitting on a chair and scratching my nuts. Don't stop when I shoot full auto is on. Your ass is grass and I'm mowing the lawn. Hot lead to the head. Yeah, I won't stop. What your crew gonna do when I hack and chop? And all you bitches are pre-Madonnas. I stuff my face with chimichangas. Tacos and beers always keeping it loose. Hang on for a minute while I'm dropping a deuce. I didn't think I was going to be able to get through all that. It's a nice action figure too. Storm Collectibles Kintaro. Oh my goodness. This is what Storm do so well. They decided to do the Mortal Kombat line and then it doesn't matter what the scale of the character is. They're like, no, if it's a giant tiger forearm man, this is how we're doing it, and he's going to be in scale with all the other characters, so this dominates the shelf. So, so cool. Beautifully well put together. Absolute mwah, chef's kiss of an action figure. Weng the Blade Master. 2023 and 2024 are the years of the anthropomorphic animal action figures, I feel. And Maestro Union with their Fure, that's it, Fure Planet line. They're coming in hot. And this Blade Master Wang, for me, he just feels like he's been ripped out of a Ninja Turtles comic. And for that, I absolutely love it. So many different accessories and display options. Just a gorgeous little piece of action figure art right there. Speedball, what a letdown this figure was, man. The whole point of the character is he's supposed to be bright and bouncing and lithe and agile, and he's just on this very basic buck with the worst thing is that Speedball, in all the pictures you see him in, he's smiling, he's got big wide eyes, big, big grin on his face, and he's bouncing around all over the place. And this is just stoic Speedball waiting in line at the bank to get his paycheck. I don't know, it just, it, it, it it's a terrible version of the character with no power effects, no bouncing balls or anything. Yeah, I gotta move on, but dang, this was a disappointment. Storm Shadow, G.I. Joe Classifieds, just so many beautiful figures that they've done in this line. I don't think there are any real failures in the Classifieds line. Maybe some of the first generation ones are a little bit ropey where they couldn't really decide what aesthetic they wanted to go for. Then once they settled on classic, then they nailed it. And this Storm Shadow, oh, just the, 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 the white-clad ninja has never looked more badass. Revoltek Black Panther. This was one of the first action figures I bought when I came back to Japan, and it was one of the first ones that showed me what Revoltek can do with their modern style technology. This version of King T'Challa just looks wicked. It's so obviously cat-like in its kind of design and appearance. The awesome poses that you can put him in because of the Revoltek styling. Yeah, I got a lot of love for this guy with some cool purple power, electric kind of effects as well. Really dynamic dynamic on the shelf. Maggot, they don't get more 90s than this. Late 90s, post onslaught 90s. That was when I was very much into the X-Men, so I was really hoping we'd get a Maggot figure eventually. And again, obscure characters. That's where Marvel Legends come to the forefront. This one definitely qualifies as that. And honestly, I think they did a good job. Some extra shades would have been quite nice, but you know what? It's fine. What we got was actually pretty darn good. King Rex bonkers. This is just, it, it, it's ridiculous. And that's why it's so amazing. A bright, gigantic, anthropomorphic T-Rex. That's, that's good enough. But then you paint him bright purple. Okay, okay, I'm with you now. And then throw on all the barbarian battle armor, even with a proper furry cape with wire in it. It's just so much to love. Again, a 
big old henchman type character for my Mortal Kombat sort of display. Yeah, this, this sings to me, man. Spirit from G.I. Joe Classified's line, another banger, hardly surprising, comes with his eagle as well with the articulated wings, so many accessories, which is always going to be the case with G.I. Joe Classifieds, they just cram as much stuff into the box as they can do, and it always is a winner. This guy with his stoic, noble kind of expression, really great. And now the power of the goddess, strike down my enemies with Mafex Storm. A very worthy upgrade to the Marvel Legend, with a couple of caveats. I just, I do like Mafex, but I wish they had thigh swivel. And I know that some folks don't like it, they don't like the way it breaks up the, the lines of the leg, but I want that extra posability, especially for characters who actually have kind of like panels in their thighs where you could put an almost invisible thigh swivel. Storm could have that, but she doesn't. Nonetheless though, she does have some really great different faces, massive big lightning effects, so with those in consideration, I still really dig her. Herald Thor, Herald of Galactus Thor. This is a standout modern Marvel legend. And sometimes I thought, hey, are people being too generous to this figure just because some of the other ones have been so lackluster? And uh, maybe that's the case. But at the same time, you can't take away the fact that it was all brand new sculpt and he just looks so big and imposing and regal with his two ravens, what are they called? Thuggin and buggin? Huggin, muggin? You know what I'm talking about. That whole set together? Yeah. And the fact that it wasn't a deluxe or anything, it was just a standard Marvel Legend? Yeah. It's what Marvel Legends should be. Bone breaker. Now this, this is how we do a builder figure. Completely brand new, an obscure-ish kind of character, and just bonkers. I love bonkersness. This Utterly ridiculous, with his great animated face, with the glasses going up and down, and the gun, it's just so much fun. The only thing, there's always a caveat, there's bare minimum nothing paint on the tank part of him. The tank could have looked so much better with a wash and a dry brush and some details on the buttons and all that kind of thing, but hey, I guess they had to reduce cost somewhere and the tank was the sacrifice. But nonetheless though, it's still a really fun looking figure. Igor Leonardo, oh my goodness, NECA absolutely killed it with these Universal Monsters mashups. This was the first one, I think, the first one that came out, and the amount of detail is insane. They cram so much into this. The designers must have had so much fun, they were like, what can we put in this? And the answer was, everything. This is what the creativity and the artistry of action figures, when it comes together, this is what they can do. Absolutely fantastic. Havoc, classic Havoc with the great ridiculous mask. They did a really good job with this. It's a basic figure because it's just a plain body with the new head, but then they gave you the extra value with the really cool spiraling, circling Havoc power effects. Those look really great. I guess, I guess that's where Speedball's power effects went. <laughs> you can't win them all. Noctimus Prime, that's kind of what I would call this unofficial Transformer, but imagine Optimus Prime from a Mad Max type world where he's got blades and spikes and grills and just looking very post-apocalyptic, so cool, with a gigantic battle axe, Wolverine style claws, and when he transforms his truck mode looks like a proper battle tank type truck. Absolutely love this. Sky Atlas, that is what he's officially called, I do believe. But by any other name, uh, this dude's a lot of fun. A dead hunt, you maggots! Sergeant Slaughter from Valiverse. Valiverse, man, if you want like a companion piece to your G.I. Joe figures, or even just bin off the G.I. Joe ones and have a whole bespoke line to yourself, that's what Valiverse is for, baby. And Sergeant Slaughter, he, he gave the likeness rights to make a banging action figure. And yeah, for the, for the big Sergeant Slaughter wrestling fan in me, I love this. Spider Gwen, Spider Gwen, does whatever a spider can. Kind of works. No, you know what? I'm going to abandon that. <laughs> I should have never started it. What I'm happy I did do, though, is buy this action figure. I don't need the whole Spider-Verse set. I wanted Miguel, but he's too expensive. Whereas Gwen, she hit that sweet spot. And with the, the maskless face sculpt, I think it just captures the look of Spider-Verse beautifully. She's spindly bindly by design. And that just gives her that agile, sleek kind of look. I got a lot of time for this. Mafex Thor, so close to greatness, but 
not quite there. I love the very retro vintage aesthetic, but he's just a little too small. And some people say, hey, it's not fair to compare him to Marvel Legends or whatever, because he's not designed to go with Marvel Legends. Yeah, but you know what? Even for Mafex, he's a little bit too small. It, it, I, I, gotta, I gotta be fair. You gotta be fair to Flair and you gotta be fair to Thor. And this, it's got nice popping bright kind of colors. It feels, it feels like Golden Age Marvel. Or is it Bronze Age? I don't know. I, I get my ages confused. But he's a nice looking figure, but just, ugh, comes up a little short. Scarab from Valiverse. Oh my goodness, I love just badass looking henchmen. And the, the dangerous thing with this action figure is you can army build the bejesus out of it. And also he gets like a an upgrade pack as well where you can just put more stuff on them to make them look even better with the wingsuit and all the different guns and accessories. This is still, I think, one of the coolest henchmen out there. And they've done repaints and all different designs, but this OG look for it, yeah, so wicked. Viper, one of my saltiest Marvel Legends reviews. I hated this figure, probably because I really wanted a good Viper figure. And I appreciate they can't all be individually sculpted bespoke figures, but the fact that this was so basic, so bare bones, and the face sculpt was pretty ugly. And look, I know that maybe, you know, evil shouldn't be beautiful, but my counter argument to that is no, Evil should be beautiful, and that character is classically a femme fatale seductress, and this figure, that ain't it. Mafex Huntress. This was an unexpected little addition. This was a gift from a friend of mine, and I, I kinda like her. I don't have a huge affinity for the larger Batman family, so this figure had to stand alone as just is it a good figure? And the answer is yes, with a but. Unfortunately, occasionally with Mafex, the connections on things like the, the wrist pegs aren't always great. Oh boy, her hand just falls off like she's a member of the Skywalker family. <laughs> so besides that though, it's a pretty looking figure. Retro Scorpion from Marvel Legends. You could argue, Dave, this is just a repaint. There's nothing special about it. A repaint can be special when it's literally everything I've ever wanted in that repaint. Because when I got the OG Scorpion, I thought, oh, this is great, it's good. But I, I wanted more popping colors. I wanted the flesh tone on the face. I know that the all green face is perfectly accurate for Scorpion, but it still looks weird to me. I can't get over like, what, what is that? Is it a mask? Did he put makeup on? I don't understand how it works. Whereas this with the flesh tone, ah, oh, it's so much better. With the lighter green and then the differences with the darker making it pop more. Yeah, this this for me is the ultimate Scorpion. Revoltech Arkham Knight. Now this is a funny one. A lot of people don't like Revoltech because yeah, the joints do look kind of weird. They're put together in an unusual sort of way where you have to kind of like tessellate the bit back and forth to pose them the way you want, but when you get them posed the way you want, oh my goodness, they look pretty incredible. And what's great about this Arkham Knight is you've got essentially two different action figures in one. You can swap out all the different parts to go from Arkham Knight to Red Hood and back again, so that's so much fun. The display options are crazy. And the fact that we're getting a Revoltech Arkham Knight Batman to go with him as well, yeah, this is one that's uh, a bit, and also, before I even forget, like the cherry red, Oh, the popping cherry red. Yeah, looks so good. I really like this guy. Big Bad Bronson Reed. I don't know, I just, I love big burly Hoss pro wrestlers. I think this is one of my only pro wrestling figures, but when I saw him, I was like, I gotta get this. With the cloth goods jacket as well, with the flames giving him a real Bam Bam Bigelow kind of vibe. He doesn't really necessarily fit anywhere in my collection, but I still really love him. Mezco Superman. Mezco have done the big blue Boy Scout proud. This is your ultimate Superman display. If you don't mind Superman in his pajamas, because that's always going to be the Mezco style, isn't it? They haven't done anything to try to make it more modernized panels and piping or anything. No, 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 no. This is the most classic Superman you could ever hope for. But he's got so many accessories, all the different faces, the laser vision, the light up functions. There's, there's so much crammed into this package. For the ultimate, like, you know, diehard classic Superman fan, you really couldn't do better than this. As long as you don't mind pajamas. Veteran William, arguably the highlight of the Furay Planet line so far. This guy comes in so many different ways of posing because you can strip all of his gear off 
and just have a full-on savage wolf man. Or you can layer everything over and you've got this wonderfully kind of Victorian looking sort of wolf man with a shotgun and a pair of blades. So, so cool. Three different wolf heads as well. And the real angry, snarling kind of one just looks so savage. Yeah, again, putting him with the other Fure guys, then with the Ninja Turtles and some other ones. There's so much fun you can have with this. I can't wait to combine my collections together. Cygor, a big cybernetic gorilla. I mean, it just sells himself. A lot of people don't like the trademark licensed rubber diaper <laughs> that he wears that most McFarlane characters do, but honestly, I can look past it because it's a giant cybernetic gorilla. That buys you a lot of credit, even with a rubber diaper. Barbecue, another absolute banger from G.I. Joe. And what's funny, not being that familiar with G.I. Joe lore, I assume they were a Cobra character because like, you know, a, a flamethrower type character. Yeah, of course, they're, they're going to be a villain. And then I realized, oh no, he he puts out the fires. So that's a bit more benevolent. He's not, he's not roasting people alive. But this figure is straight fire. Really love it. Very, very cool. MDLX Optimus Prime. Oh, the the three zero MDLX Transformers, that might honestly be my favorite, favorite line to collect. I just, I dig them. I love them so much. I, I, just, I love them so much. It, I almost get emotional because they're, they're all just so beautiful. It's really making a dent in my action figure budget, but you know what? I'm not even mad. Optimus Prime alone, man. He's, he looks great. And the rest of them, every bit as good. Warhammer Necron, a real winner from McFarlane. I used to be into Warhammer a bit when I was a kid, but I didn't know about these characters. I think they came along later, but essentially robots that are draped in flesh to kind of try to disguise themselves as humans. You might want to work on that disguise, but McFarlane doesn't have to work anymore on those figures because honestly, they nailed them. This looks creepy as hell. So, so cool. Hasbro the Black Series Mandalorian. Hey, come on, when the Mandalorian first hit TV screens, it was like, oh, finally, we got some, some good Star Wars, the kind of Star Wars that we want. And yeah, the Hasbro did a good job with this OG Mando figure. Once I saw the, the TV show, I was like, okay, we got to get some representation on here. And I'm glad that I did. Loose Collector's Monster Hide. What an incredible chunky brick of a doorstop this figure is. But it's incredible. It really, really is. I'm a big Loose Collector fan. This guy reminds me, of course, of the Select Juggernaut, but with modern day engineering and articulation. So he's really poseable. You can have so much fun with what you can do with this guy. An absolute terrifying beast of an action figure. You know, uh, when this last action figure was made, the, uh, the makers came up to me and they said, uh, this was the greatest action figure that, that we've ever put together. And they had a tear in their eye and, and they just said, thank you. And I said, that's all right. That's my, that's my humble Bret Hart impression. <laughs> if you ever want to know how great Bret Hart is, just ask him or ask me because I'm the world's biggest Bret Hart fan. I know there might be someone, uh, someone else I won't fight you on it. But I had to have a Bret Hart figure. And also in his best attire that he only wore once at Survivor Series 1996, he had this awesome version of his gear that was like a dark pink with some orange and purple highlights in there. So, so cool. It's not a perfect action figure. I'm not actually a big fan of it. And I've literally never seen a good Bret Hart face or an action figure. But nonetheless, just to have this costume makes it worthwhile. Return of the Jedi Boba Fett, a deluxe figure from Hasbro, a little bit overpriced, but you get a lot of bang for your buck. Beautiful Boba Fett sculpt, all the paintwork's there, he, he looks the bomb, and let's face it, Boba Fett's always going to be the coolest character in Star Wars if you just forget everything that happened after Return of the Jedi. <laughs> but this figure with the flame, the flamethrower blast as well, pop him, pop him in a flight stand, easy for me to say. And yeah, he's just, he just stands out on the shelf beautifully. Really cool figure. Select Iron Man, Centurion Iron Man. So many bells and whistles coming with this figure. I really love how bright and ridiculous it can look when he's got all of his different blast effects on there. He looks like a Catherine wheel spinning around. And what's really fun actually as well is that the different blast effects all fire out in different ways. Some are like a straight looking beam, other ones are kind of like blocky. There's so much creativity that went into designing different ways of making this figure pop. When it all comes together, it's a great little standalone piece.
Mezco Moon Knight, flawed but beautiful as well. One thing that I love is the body where they've done different panels and things that kind of break up the suit, makes it look like he's wearing body armor. That's wicked. What's kind of a shame though is his cowl is then hard plastic. So it doesn't really kind of go with the soft goods cape, which is another funny one. There's no wire in the cape, but they gave this ridiculous kind of like construction Meccano set that you can build to put the cape on behind. And it's like, <laughs> you really, you really put, made that more difficult than you needed to. So yeah, it's a great figure, but kind of funny choices as well. Goro from Storm Collectibles. This was the first Storm Collectibles figure from the Mortal Kombat line that I saw and I was like, I think I might have to get into this line because it was just a perfect representation of Goro with all the articulation and he's huge as well. And I saw him at a Comic-Con and I was like, oh no, this looks so expensive. And I'm terrified that I might end up buying him. I did, I, 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 I did, I did. And also, you know what? I regret nothing. Revoltek Moon Knight. Oh my goodness. Revoltek have stepped up their game in a big way over the last year. There were often very big kind of caveats and problems I had with their design style and just the way their figures held together in general. Nah. -ah. Not anymore. They, they really have nailed it. And this Moon Knight is just a beautiful example of what they can do, especially with characters that have masks for faces. So if you don't like the anime style, that's fine. It's not an issue. You just get this badass looking Mark Spector Moon Knight on a flight stand with the cape billowing out behind him. Yeah, this thing is gorgeous. Splinter from the animated NECA Turtles line. This, this is gorgeous. I, I sold off most of my animated turtles, but I kept Splinter because I just love him with his cloth robe, the kimono. He's just, he's just kind of adorable. This little rat character. I think I put him up for sale, but no one bought him. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna keep him. And also, you know what? I'm glad that I did. Mafex Scarlet Spider. Oh, this was a heartbreaker for me because this was kind of a dream figure. Mafex, who you can argue makes some of the best Spider-Men out there, and then Ben Riley, the Scarlet Spider. It's a match made in heaven and, until his leg broke. And then, oh, just the pain. And then so many people messaged me saying, oh, you too, huh? It was like that meme at the gallows. First time, huh? So a lot of people had this problem with Scarlet Spider. So ah, I can't say that he's a great figure, but he is, except for the breakage. So you know what? I still love him, even though I probably shouldn't. Baxter Stockman from the Animated Turtles line. This cute little fly guy, he's just adorable. It's so funny that the concept is based off of the fly, the movie, which is horrifying. At least the Cronenberg one is. But then this cartoonified version is just... Yeah, it's so cute. He's got these little like, like, like puppy dog sort of look to it, to his face. I, I really dig it. It's just fun with a little gun with the mutagen selector. It's like, what animal do I want to turn you into? It's just, yeah. Did I say it's fun? It's super fun. Leo Convoy. This is what I always wanted when I got the Hasbro version of this character. Because I love the idea of Lion and Optimus Prime together. That's wicked. But I thought that the Lion on the Hasbro one looked a little bit too cutesy. And I wanted something more badass to oppose the trans metal style Megatron. This, this is the one. He doesn't actually transform, which as you know, that's how I prefer my Transformers. Because then you can just have a badass looking robot mode. And this robot mode, it's pretty badass. Mezco Daredevil, my go-to Daredevil. I, I think this uh, version of the Netflix costume, it looks really, really cool. I feel like we never actually got a good look at the costume on the Netflix show, but seeing it in Mezco form, yeah, that's kind of the gritty, badass looking Daredevil. And because of the material it's made out of and kind of the armor paneling and stuff, it doesn't look like he's wearing his pajamas. So because of that, he just looks wicked on the shelf. I still, to this day, love this version of the character. You know what? I don't even really know the names of these girls, these anime girls. They come in a pair and I, I don't know, they were a gift. And there's a lot of different words on the boxes, but none that specifically say this is so-and-so. But I just know her as soft, squidgy boob anime girl because that's what she is. Yeah, my introduction to silicone figures. That's something different, I gotta admit. I kind of love it. It's awesome. I don't think you'd want that for every single figure because silicone has its own little caveats, but just having these as a fun, ridiculous anime cheesecake curiosity, I got to admit, they kind of have my heart. 
Mafex Ben Riley, sensational Spider-Man. Oh my goodness, come on, if you're watching this show, you gotta know that Ben Riley is my boy. I, my favorite comic book character of all time. And Mafex did this great, dare I say, sensational version of his costume. I can't wait to get this figure back in my collection when I go back to England and have this paired up with their Scarlet Spider. Those two together, yeah, what a combination. I really dig this. Kraken Girl. This is just what I'm calling a Kraken Girl. I think it is just Kraken on the box. But what it is, is another anime girl with the combination of silicon body, which is, again, is, I still don't know if I like it. I wouldn't want all my action figures to be like that. But as an unusual novelty, I really kind of dig it. What first caught my eye was just the soft goods. I didn't even realize that the rest of her was soft as well. Now, also, I haven't seen what it's like with silicon figures over time. I've heard that there can be issues with, you know, they, they, they might crack or get dry. I'm, I'm going to, you know, wait and see in that regard. But as she stands right now with the cool soft goods, the diving tank, the stand, all the accessories, it's a really fun, curious little oddity of an action figure that I'm, I'm really happy to have in the collection. Zartan, another classifieds figure that just has so much packed in into him. Almost a bit of a problem that he has so many accessories, I kind of start to worry like, oh, have I lost that? Wait, does that have everything it's supposed to go with? I love that he's got the alternate face and all that kind of thing. Like, it's just, it's just the joy of seeing an action figure that a company's gone, yeah, yeah, let's put our whole ass into this. Let, let, let's really go ham. You know what they did? He looks really wicked. One of my favorite action figures, Axel Stone from Streets of Rage. Storm Collectibles, it's kind of a tease because they did such a good job with this figure that I'm like, and the rest of the line, please? And they were like, no, nah, we might do or we might not, who knows? So they're doing Adam, or they've done Adam, but Blaze, I'm still waiting for her. Hopefully one day, because if she's the same quality as this Axel Stone, with all his fire and flame effects as well, ah, oh, it's so great. Yeah, fingers crossed, we will get it one day. You know I'm something of an action figure reviewer myself. Willem Dafoe, Green Goblin. Hasbro Marvel Legends, they had a bit of a dodgy couple of years, I feel, throughout 2022-2023, but this was an absolute gem. Coming out recently, giving the people what they want, except for the ability to pose in a good way on his glider. That's something that's a bit of a caveat. He, he looks a little bit awkward standing on his glider. If they'd given him maybe a calf swivel, that would have helped with the articulation and the posing. That notwithstanding, though, this is a great realization of the No Way Home Green Goblin costume, which was itself a great upgrade to the original Sam Raimi one. So yeah, as a complete package, I think this guy's pretty good. Curse of Spawn. This is one of those action figures that's almost just a statue. It's a slightly movable statue, but you know what? When it's posed as wicked looking as it is, you don't really need to repose it. McFarlane's like, no, don't worry. I did the work for you. It looks great. Just stick with that. And honestly, I'm happy to. I just love this cyber techno grim reaper type design. Really awesome. Mafex Cyborg Superman. Yeah, reign of the Superman. It's the 90s. That's always going to have my heart. That's what I grew up with. Death of Superman, Clone Saga, Age of Apocalypse, all those kinds of things. They hearken to me. So Cyborg Superman, he was kind of a no-brainer. Darwin. What a nothing figure this was. <laughs> hey, look, it's Darwin. I know that that's always the argument with Marvel Legends. They can't put all the funds into every character. Sometimes you've got to just get them out the door in order to at least have them represented. That's what Darwin was. But dang, I don't, I don't know anyone who, who loves Darwin. It's just a, yeah, that's a nothing figure. Athea and Atheron from Mythic Legions. Oh, this was my first Mythic Legions figure and I just, I saw it and I thought, I, I gotta go all in. This bright flaming horse with this demon devil knight on it. Yeah, that, that, that's a no-brainer. I, I might sell off a whole bunch of action figures, but I think this one's always gonna be safe because dang it, it just brightens up any shelf he's on. I ran out of words there, but <laughs> I, don't, I don't need any words. Pictures speak for themselves. Mezco Krieg. I don't know what it is about this design. I just kind of love it. The, the, the insect-like sort of sentinel kind of helmet just looks really cool. And then this Stormtrooper style black and white hoth looking winter gear. He's got a, a sort of a shawl, a poncho that he wears over him as well. A whole bunch of weapons and grenades and guns and clips and blast effects and stuff. Yeah, 
The more I think about it, the more I'm, I'm sort of doubling down that this figure is wicked. There's a black version and a red version. There's a, a Hornet version as well. There's all these different ones, but just the plain simplicity of the black and white, I really dig that. Mezco Iron Man, my go-to Iron Man. There's been a lot of figures released for Tony Stark, but this is still my favorite. The fact that he's made out of a die-cast metal, like that just, I mean, come on, it's, it's Iron Man. That kind of just, it just works so well. He's got so many blast effects as well. If you want to put all the different effects on him, it's like, oh my goodness, this guy's just, he's, he's a firework display. But also, of course, the arc reactor in his chest lights up. That's really gorgeous. Having him flying around my HasLab Galactus, chef's kiss. Marv from Sin City. I saw this at a video game swap shop con. There was a random box of bric-a-brac and he was in there for five bucks. And I thought, you know what, for five bucks, I'm gonna roll the dice on this. And I'm glad that I did. Again, just a figure that's a little oddity. I think it was McFarlane from way back, like before the movie came out. This is based just on the comic book. And yeah, nasty, grim, visceral, gross, a severed head and a hacksaw that he comes with. Yeah, this is really cool. Guardian of the Horde. Oh my goodness, a big chunky orc warrior boy. And I'm not a big orc person. I'm more of a lawful good kind of guy. Whereas orcs, they're all about neutral chaotic. But when you get an action figure that has so much that you can put on and take off and play around with, you can strip this guy down to his tighty whities or you can have him fully loaded up ready for battle. I put him with my Shao Kahn Mortal Kombat type display. He's a great thuggish kind of henchman. There's a lot of fun to be had with this guy. Prophet Director Destro. I had to. I just pimp Daddy Destro, as he's known. Just look at him. One of the most ridiculous action figures. Definitely the most ridiculous G.I. Joe Classifieds action figure. And we've got characters that come with giant crocodiles. But you know what? This thing, it's so silly. I absolutely love it. I got all the time in the world for this. Oh, we've been speaking about army builders already on this list. The bats. The bats are incredible. Classifieds. Oh, you knew what you were doing when you made these. You were like, let's give so many swappable parts that they can't possibly buy just one. And you know what's so great is that all the accessories with the different arms, they all fit on there. They go in the backpack. That's what's so good. And then you've got the battle damaged chest piece, the battle damaged face mask. There's so much crammed into this. Honestly, one of the best Hasbro figures of all time. There you go. Hands down. Pants down. That's what I'm saying. This thing, this is so great. I mean, I bought three and I'm not an army builder, so that's saying something. Heat Boys Mech Leonardo. I mean, I don't even know what to say. This was my action figure of the year for 2023 because it's just bonkers. It's got so much stuff. First of all, it's it's big and it's made out of metal. It's, it, it's heavy, but the mechanics and the technology of putting it together are just incredible. The way that it moves and bends and parts tessellate and slide over each other, it's gorgeous. Then throw in magnetized electronic devices inside for light up features, the creativity that went into going, how could we make a giant mech ninja turtle? And then actioning that, just so much to love about this thing. This, this is always going to be an absolute favorite of mine. I'd love the other three, but oh, oh, that would be an expensive set. But just Leonardo on his own, that's good enough for me. Atticus Doom from Mezco, genuinely one of my absolute favorite action figures of all time. You want to talk about the art of action figures, this, this is the meshing right here. This feels like a stop motion animation puppet. That's what's so beautiful about it. It doesn't feel like a toy, it doesn't feel like an action figure, it feels like something more, like this could be in a museum piece. Comes with so much stuff as well. You pretty much have two different characters here, with a Cthulhu head, or the cute, sort of adorable kind of skull head. Just love the occult voodoo kind of vibes to it. Everything about it, all the accessories. He comes with like this Necronomicon style spell book, guess what? You can actually open it and flick through the pages. Like that's, that's the work that's gone into this. This is Mezco. This is action figures at its best, at their best. Everything just, ah, still one of my all time favorites. Amazing. We're Marley and Marley. Woo! <laughs> Jacob Marley, man. I, I dig it. I dig it so, so much. Figure Obscura. I'm a big Christmas kid. I love Christmas. So now I've got Krampus, I've got Santa Claus, and I've got Jacob Marley. These are figures that are always going to come out 
every Christmas. They're going to be my Christmas display. I'm getting giddy like a little kid thinking about it because I love Christmas. So of course I love this. Amazing Yamaguchi cable. I was very dubious when I saw pictures of this. I thought the action figure can't look that good in person. And I messaged a buddy of mine who had it and I was like, dude, is this legit? And he was like, oh yeah. The only thing you got to be aware of is that, like, he's like buckaroo. Things will fall off of him constantly. But if you put them in and you pose him and you just leave him to look gorgeous, that's what he'll do. And guess what? He does. I love the anime sort of aesthetic to it as well. I like mixing up my different lines and versions, and some people might hate that. For me, I, I dig it. So having this super anime looking cable, tremendous. The, the detail on the costume, the, the, the texture, just everything about it. Still to this day, I, I swear I'm telling you, the best cable out there. Mafex Steel, Reign of the Supermen. If you want something that pops off the shelf. I mean, this guy just looks like a beautiful big hood ornament. You can see him kind of posing on the front of a car with his big old sledgehammer and the cape blowing in the breeze. This made me think, do I need all the Reign of the Superman figures? I'm not even a DC guy, but having all those guys together, you know they're gonna look good. Gans Boy. I think that's just the official name. I even, <laughs> I can't remember now. Is it a cold dog figure? It doesn't matter, just, just, just look at him. He's this beautiful little robot accountant. I guess, a Japanese accountant. I just, I ran out of words because it's just so beautiful. Again, looks like a stop motion animation puppet. The cloth, the cloth suit beautifully stitched together. His little shoes have laces that are laced up. His little face with a little light on the front, it, it, it glows with a battery. He's just, he just looks adorable. He's got a big chonky mobile phone like Paul Heyman and he comes with a, a, a table with a bowl of ramen that he's got his little chopsticks that he's trying to eat because he, he thinks he's people, but he's not, he's a little robot. But you know what? He's doing his best. And I really, really love him. Ugh. Yeah, I love him. Green Ranger Shredder. Oh my goodness, this. This is one of my favorite action figures. It's so random. Power Rangers, Ninja Turtles, smoosh them together, boom. Green Ranger Shredder with a cloth goods cape as well. Beautiful gold metallic armor on there too. And just a wicked design mashup. I mean, just give out the credit right there. You, you take Shredder who looks awesome. You take the Green Ranger who looks awesome. You put them both together, guess what you got? One of the most awesome mashup figures out there. I might sell off a whole bunch of action figures, but this thing, I'm always going to be keeping hold of him. I, I love this. Lord Zed. I'm not a huge Power Rangers fan, but I'm a fan of cool looking designs. And Lord Zed, like even in the TV show, when he replaced Rita Repulsa, I was like, okay. Now we're talking, this is a villain I can get behind. The kind of faceless armor, knight kind of mask, looking so menacing with his brain exposed and his body that's just muscle. Like it, it's a real visceral, gory look for a character for like a Saturday morning kids show, but they managed to make him goofy enough that he wasn't threatening. But just in pure action figure form, you got all the badassery of the look and that's what's important. This, this is wicked. Venom Pool, one of the coolest Marvel Legends Builder figures ever made. Nay, one of the coolest Marvel Legends ever made. This is when you get Builder figures right. Complete, bespoke, from scratch, I think. Stop me if I'm wrong. I don't think there's any reuse in this thing. Also, such a random character. He hadn't even appeared in the comics by that point. I don't think, maybe he had, stop me if I'm wrong, but I thought he was mainly from the Marvel, the Marvel fighting mobile game. It doesn't matter where the design came from. It's wicked. It's, it, it's Deadpool in a Venom symbiote. And also, I know that they have done that concept before this figure. I'm getting lost in the weeds. The bottom line. So this thing is so awesome. The texture, the detailing on it, the, the, oh, the big claw hands, the swords that he can hold. Fantastic. Marvel Legends, golf clap. Bravo. Bravo, guys. This, this was something special. Willem Dafoe's Sabretooth. That's what most people know this Sabretooth as because, yeah, it looks like Willem Dafoe. What it doesn't really look like much is Sabretooth in his first appearance. I don't think it was really kind of fitting. The body feels a bit too small and skinny and that, that Willem Dafoe face, it's, it's kind of fun, but I don't really associate it with Sabretooth. So a bit of a swing and a miss on this one. The Wolf Assassin from Snail Shell. This is just weird. And if you know me, you know I've got a lot of time for weirdness. Looks like a Metal Gear Solid character. There's two different versions. There's the anime head you can put on there, which I'm not a big fan of the anime aesthetic most of the time. But then you've got this just weird cybernetic wolf-like design. 
that. I do have some time for that with a cool bendy wire grappling hook gun as well. This just goes straight into my kind of cosmic sci-fi sort of display and yeah, I really dig it. NECA Universal Monsters TMNT Frankenstein Raphael. Again, another one of those figures that I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to get this whole set. In fact, I know that I'm not going to get the whole set, but I just want to get this in hand so I can see how much work and detail has gone into it. I remember trying to do, to do the review of this, and it was difficult because I was just, there was so much to talk about. I love it when you get an action figure where you can see that the, the designers went, what can we do? What can we put into this? And it seemed like at no point was NECA saying, whoa, guys, slow down. You need to reduce costs a little bit here. No, no, no. It's like they just said, guys, you have carte blanche. Do whatever you want. Go nuts. And baby, they went nuts and it shows. And I love it. Jada Toys absolutely dominating the action figure scene right now with their Street Fighter line. And Chun-Li, for me personally, is one of the absolute highlights. I just love everything they've done with her. I can literally hear the words, spinning bird kick, every time I look at her. Just absolutely gorgeous. There's rumors and rumblings and scuttlebutt that we're going to get player two versions with the different colors. So a pink version of this Chun-Li with some new accessories. Yeah, I think I might have to double dip. Mafex Psylocke, a flawed figure. I always wanted a really good Psylocke. We got the Marvel Legends one and she's decent, but I wanted one with more posability and fun. And the Mafex like, oh, it almost gets it. I still really like it. But one really silly little thing is that you can't really point the toes very well. The feet don't really angle down very far. And with a, with a lithe, agile ninja, you kind of want pointed toes a little bit more. And then her hair feels a little bit stiff and stoic, which of course it is, it's plastic. But I think, you know, there's, there's a few little things that stop it being perfect. But it's still a very nice action figure and still my go-to Psylocke. Controller, one of the more basic builder figures. This didn't do anything for me because I didn't even know who the controller was. But that's not a bad thing because Marvel Legends, that's kind of their wheelhouse, is doing these figures that people don't necessarily know, the deep cut characters for the real hardcore fans. So I do appreciate that, but at the same time, it's a builder figure with no extra heads, no extra hands, and the body's pretty much just a reused Thanos. So come on guys, you could have tried harder. Crocker, the first entry into the Furay Planet line, and what an absolute banger. I love my big chonky boys. And this was the first one that also made me think, you know what? Ninja Turtles expanded universe display. I cannot wait till I get this guy back to England so I can pair him up with my Jim Henson style turtles. That's your leather head right there. And oh my goodness, this, this display as it's growing and building in my mind. <laughs> Lads, it's gonna look money. Toy Biz Beetle. This was a real oddity. This Beetle design is from the Thunderbolts comics, where it's not the OG Beetle, but this new one in this huge Roidy Magoo version of the Beetle armor, which I really love. Like, this looks more like a Beetle than the original Beetle. And I just love how chunky and chonky it is. And it's so funny because nowadays, this would be a Builder figure. Back in the day, this was just a single release figure in a beautiful jam-packed card back package. And it just looked amazing, and even to this day, still ha still holds up. It holds up in your hands. It hands up. It hands up in your holds. I should stop trying to correct sentences that I've garbled. Nonetheless, look at the pictures. Doesn't he look great? Of course he does. Go buy him. Or don't. Just enjoy it. Let's move on to the next one. Select Juggernaut. What an absolute brick of a figure this is. I completely appreciate. This thing has hardly got any articulation to it at all, but you know what? You don't always need it. You just need him standing there being like, I'm the Juggernaut. The face sculpt looks so cool. The, the paintwork is gorgeous, it's so detailed. I wish you could put him in more of a running pose. It's a shame that you can't really do that, but just as a visual, he's still the best Juggernaut out there, I really think. I, I sold him and now I really wish I hadn't because I do want to buy him back for my X-Men villains display, but he's gonna cost so much to ship because he weighs a ton, but I might have to do that because I really love this guy. Mafex Magneto, I'm not a huge fan of the Mafex face sculpt. I like everything else about him, which is great with the big billowing cape, such a lovely classic Jim Lee kind of looking Magneto, but the face just looks so porcelain. It's a real shame. I kind of want to get a different Magneto and pop the head on and see how that looks. So it's, it, it, it's good, but it's not great, but it's more of an aesthetic choice on my part. But yeah, the, the faces, they just don't do it for me.
Highly articulated Black Widow. Marvel Legends female figures finally catch up with 2024. It's about darn time. So occasionally I think, you know what, people praise this figure a little bit too much. Because I'm like, yeah, it is good. But it, it should be. It's 2024. This is what action figures should be like. But you know what? Saltiness aside, three different head sculpts, all very different in appearance, and each one of them really, really good. With different guns and weapons and smoke effects and all kinds of stuff, it is a complete package of an action figure. And honestly, she was a highlight of last year. Four Horsemen Studios, Headless Horseman. This, <laughs> the legend of Ichabod Crane. I remember seeing the animated version as a kid and it kind of terrified me. But because of that, I've always had this affinity for the Headless Horseman because now even as an adult, it's funny, the things that scared you as a kid still kind of bring back some of those feelings as an adult. And this kind of makes me a little bit uncomfortable. And that's really cool. So having this action figure that does that on the beautiful articulated horse with the flaming pumpkin, ah, just every Halloween, this guy's coming out. Funny story, I ordered, I believe it was Azrael Batman on Amazon and I got Dark Knight Batman. And at first I thought, oh man, this sucks. I wanted the, well, having said that, it's kind of cool actually. So I kept it and you know what? I'm glad I did. I'm not a huge Frank Miller fan, but I do love how Mafex completely perfectly just took his Batman cover artwork and just created it in a 3D form. It, it, it's perfect. So with that in mind, I, I've got a big appreciation for this figure. I didn't think I was going to get it at all, so it's kind of a nice surprise. NECA War Duke. This kind of came out of nowhere for me. One of the last action figures I bought when I was in the UK. I wasn't planning to get NECA Dungeons and Dragons, but I saw these in store and I looked at them and having them in hand, I thought, these are so good. There's so much to them. I got to get a review out for these guys. And honestly, I'm glad I did. We are the future, Charles, not them. I can do a pretty good Ian McKellen, if I say so myself. And you know who can do a pretty good Magneto? Mezco. And this is my go-to Magneto. I thought he might be replaced by the Mafex, but since I have him in hand, I don't know if that's gonna be the case. Cause I love the cloth goods. I love his power effect dismantling a gun as well. It's a real basic thing for Magneto to do, but as, a, as, an, as an ex extra, as an accessory, sorry, words are hard. I, I really love it. It's very, very creative. And he looks kind of like an old man as Magneto like, really should do, technically. So it's encompassing all the great elements of the Ian McKellen Magneto with a comic book Magneto, schmooshing them together. Uh, yeah, I think he's gonna be difficult to top for me. I, I still really love this guy. Necker Leonardo from the 1990s movie, pure Jim Henson goodness. Still one of my absolute favorite action figures because it's just, beautiful. NECA somehow managed to literally just transform the classic costumes made by Jim Henson Studios into these action figures. It looks like they just shrunk them down. They're so, so beautiful. The eyes look soulful. I really, I really adore this. With so many amazing Ninja Turtles versions and variants coming out over the last few years, these NECA ones, they're still my favorites. Mandarin Spawn, kind of a remake of a classic old 90s figure from McFarlane. Honestly, I gotta say, I think I still kind of prefer the older one, but this new one does have more articulation, there's more going on with it, and just this beautiful, kind of, I, I don't know, I'm not a historian, but like kind of a medieval Chinese kind of look. Yeah, yeah, that's wicked. Christmas Mandalorian, one of the worst action figures I have ever bought in my entire life. And honestly, they say a fool and his money are easily parted. And I guess that means this one is on me. Because I looked at him in the box and I was like, I mean, it's just a, a cheap repaint, but it's Christmas. And then I got him and you know what just killed it for me? Empty holsters. 
there is no greater crime in the action figure world than making a figure with holsters and no guns. I'm looking at you too, re-released version of Bullseye. It's just, it, it just screams, we're cutting costs and you're gonna get a crappy action figure because of it. And yeah, this, this guy, oh, he's pretty irredeemable. And again, that's on me. Links from Fortnite, a real little curiosity of a figure. I've only ever played Fortnite once, hated the experience, but some of the designs are very cool. I got this just to go in my kind of cyber assassin sort of display. She'll be hanging out in my Ninja Turtles collection, just looking like another ally, villain, something in between. Doesn't matter, it's a ninja cat lady. That's all the justification you need. Gorilla Grodd. I don't know Gorilla Grodd. I know he's a Flash villain, isn't he? Like a psychic monkey guy. Doesn't matter. He's a giant ape wearing battle armor. That's good enough for me. Going straight in with my Fure Planet display. I just love the look of him. And for a basic priced action figure, you get such cool sculpting. I rag on McFarlane all the time, but when they do great stuff, I'll sing their praises. And this, this deserves to have some praises sung. Spiral from Marvel Legends. Hasbro went all in with this lady. After the kind of ugly looking six-armed Spider-Man, I thought to myself, you know what, maybe we not better not do multiple armed characters. And then Hasbro went, yo, hold my beer, let me do this right. Boom, you're looking for this? And my answer was, yes. As a matter of fact, I was. Golf clap right there. For me, straight out of X-Men Children of the Atom. That's my nostalgic counterpoint for Spiral. I really, really dig this. One of the absolute standout Marvel Legends releases. The Alpha Predator. I only wanted to get one NECA Predator because they are expensive. And I thought, this, this is such an awesome concept. It was the 100th figure, I think, 100th Predator figure they made. And they wanted to do something special. So this is like the OG kind of caveman version of the Predator. I love the lore. I love the idea of it. And realized in action figure form, he still looks so awesome. Storm Collectibles Scorpion. I believe this is the San Diego Comic-Con exclusive version. And yeah, he's never looked better. With the real chain, the slightly quilted version of the costume just makes me think classic arcade Mortal Kombat. Again, bring him back. All that 90s nostalgia. And <laughs> as history has proven, I'll pay a lot of money for that 90s nostalgia, Unapologi unapologetically. There you go, got the word out. This guy with the flame effects he comes with as well. Yeah, there's a lot of fun to be had with this. Mephisto from Diamond Select. Oh my goodness, the figure that we may never see in Marvel Legends form, but Select, they did it so, so well. Pretty difficult to get your hands on now, but with his throne and the stature of him as well, he's a great centerpiece for your Marvel villains if you can get hold of him. It baffles me that Select haven't re-released him, but who knows, maybe one day. In the meantime, you can enjoy the OG one because he's awesome. Cyrax, my favorite Mortal Kombat character from Storm Collectibles. Because sometimes I think the human characters might look a little bit wonky, but when it's all just a cybernetic design, that's wicked. The posability is amazing. The articulation on the figure is second to none. So, so great. But just the design, the cool kind of biker helmet looking, it looks like, it looks like a dirt bike type helmet. And that's what's kind of fun, was that the designs for the Mortal Kombat 3, you could see that they were just kind of like put together by whatever the studio could afford to make. So it's kind of, kind of kitsch, but also really fun. This guy, he's just really fun. Revoltech Iron Spider. This has a lot of great stuff and some not so good things. The best parts are that they fully realized the most awesome look of his Waldos, of his legs. They put in all the details, all the articulation, all the little lines and cables and everything that goes into just making them look so dynamic. But because there's so much there, they are kind of heavy, so it can be difficult to get them to hold their pose sometimes. And then just the Spider-Man design with the Revoltech body, you know, it's a bit angular, looks a bit armored, but then again, that is kind of like Iron Man type armor he's wearing, so you can get around it. What I'm saying though, is that the total package, it works, and I do kind of like it. And now, Cher, we got ourselves the gambit from Mayfix. And this here figure, Cher, here beautiful figure, not as beautiful as you, though. 
No, you make the old raging Cajun feel raging inside. Inside is hot. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I, I just got on a little gambit thing there. Mafex Gambit, absolutely stunning. Mwah. Chef's Kiss, the, the cloth goods, the huge big power effect. Yeah, this is this is the ultimate gambit. That has, has yet to be topped and honestly, I don't know if it can be. Mezco Thanos, a real Marmite action figure. Me personally, I adore this guy. When I'm always telling people how much I love Mezco Thanos, they will be the first to go, oh, what, that guy with the stumpy legs and the baggy spacesuit? And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, he's amazing. Because he is, with the huge infinity gauntlet that lights up, the different face sculpts, the maniacal grin, the big chunky boots. I just love everything about him. And if you do too, then you can come join me on Mezco Thanos Island, where drinks are free and we all just hang out enjoying being better than everyone else because we love Mezco Thanos. Or if you don't want to join us there, then <laughs> you can do, but you know, it's more fun over here. Optic Blast, Mezco Cyclops. Now this is a real contentious one because Mezco do what they do do sometimes and what they do do is they don't do various things that the action figures normally do. Does that make sense? Basically they took his pants off, which hey look, this is model behavior. I'm always telling you, take off your pants and crack a beer. So I kind of gotta like him for that. But genuinely, I love the Mezco style, but I, I think I would have preferred him if he was wearing the yellow underpants because that's 90s Cyclops. But even without those, he's got the great bomber jacket and I do love the panels and piping they put on the suit to break it up a little bit. Then with a huge, optic blast effect that has a light in there as well to really make it pop. Yeah, he's still my go-to Cyclops. Select Titanium Man. What a chunky, chunky action figure. And what's great about him is that the character of Titanium Man is supposed to be a giant. So you can still put him with your Marvel Legends display and it works. But also the bright metallic racing green, oh, that's just absolutely gorgeous. So this thing, it's, it's a great little select figure, or a great big select figure that works well with Marvel Legends as well. And that, that's the sweet spot. Ripley from Fortnite. Never seen this character in the game before, but I just saw him on a shelf and I thought, you're adorable. This commando amorphous blob character. I just love him with the translucent blue plastic so the sun can shine through him and he just glows on the shelf. He's got this cute little face as well. I just kind of fell in love with him. Sometimes you see a random action figure and you think, I don't know you, but I want you on my shelf. You want to know what the best Marvel legend of all time is? Don't worry, I'll tell you. Deluxe Doctor Strange. Because you know what? I shouldn't have even called it Deluxe. Because it's just a regular Marvel legend. With the amount of accessories and options packed into him, you would have thought, oh no, this is going to be a $30, you know, more zhuzhed up release. No, no, no. Just a regular release action figure. I know that just with the budgets that they have, not every Marvel legend can be like this. I understand it, but oh my goodness, when you do get a complete package like this Doctor Strange, oh, this, this is how Marvel Legends should be. It's like that quote from Age of Ultron. Is this, is this what Marvel Legends are? This is what Marvel Legends should be. Ali Viper from G.I. Joe Classifieds. You know what I love so much about this character and this design is that the reason they are bright, popping, ridiculous colors is because in kayfabe, they're such badasses that they want the enemy to see them because they know that it's going to intimidate them into running away. Like, that's so cool. I dig that. Because occasionally you'll get action figure type character designs and you're like, well, that's not practical. No one would wear such bright colors. But if you're wearing them because you want to terrify the enemy at your very presence, that's awesome. Bernice from the Combatants Fight for Glory line from Zezray Studios. She's just a fantastic, beautiful, gorgeous gladiator lady. Yes. Thank you, sir. May I have another? Fits right in with either my Mortal Kombat collection or maybe kind of my Ninja Turtles display or just with any big crazy monsters that she can fight. I really, really dig this. This was a gift from a friend of the show and my goodness, I'm so grateful because it's not easy to get hold of these figures in the UK. So actually being able to add her to my collection after experiencing some serious FOMO, I'm so glad I got her. She's wicked. Mezco Iron Fist. I don't think I've ever read a single standalone Iron Fist comic. Doesn't matter 
because I wanted this action figure anyway, because it just stands alone in its own regard as being a beautiful bit of action figure artistry. It really, really is. The, the cloth goods work really well because he should be wearing kind of a jumper suit. It, it looks like he's wearing a wetsuit, but then again, that's kind of the martial arts kung fu kind of look, so it works. And then they have thrown in some extra details and panels and piping to break it up a little bit so it doesn't look too much like pajamas. Then with his awesome flaming fire effects, the whole package together, really, really awesome Danny Rand. Mezco Wolverine, the ultimate Wolverine in my opinion. There are some big flaws before I say how great he is. His head's too big, his body's generally too big. He's too tall for Wolverine really. He's almost as tall as Cyclops. I can look past all of that because I still just love everything they've done. It's the ultimate Wolverine package. He's got about seven different heads. You can have so many different looks. You can change the belt. You can have him as OG first appearance Wolverine or more modern adamantium skull battle damaged Wolverine. The claws are beautiful. So well done. Everything about this figure just, it sings to me, man. With the sentinel base as well. Yeah, literally, like I said, the ultimate Wolverine figure. Diamond Select, Beta Ray Bill. Oh, the Norse horse, this, this guy, absolutely fantastic. Huge, massive. And you can argue that he's too big for a Marvel Legends display. I say, this is a giant Norse horse, okay? He's an alien. He can be as big as you want him to be. Having him in your display with the spinning hammer and just like, rah, coming into battle, so dynamic, so bright, so colorful, so awesome, so worth having. This guy, ah, oh, huge double thumbs up. Transmetal Megatron, ah. Oh. <laughs> yes, giant robot dragon. Thank you, sir. Normally, I would just want to have the Transformer in one form because there's always a superior looking version, whether it's the robot or the disguised mode. This, I can never tell which one I want to have it in. I think usually the dragon, but it's also so much fun to actually transform this guy because it's quite simplistic, but it's it works. And just either way you want to have him, just looks amazing. I don't collect many modern Transformers or any besides the 3DLX ones, but, but this, yeah, this is something special. I, I love this guy. Krampus, the evil counterpart to Santa Claus, again from Four Horsemen Studios. This guy is just so demonic. I mean, this is terrifying. If you think about the little kids back in the days when they would tell stories of Krampus, yeah, you better believe I'm gonna be good all year because I don't want this thing coming to get me. But I do want him on my shelf though because, dang, he, he, he looks wicked. Mortaro. This was so cool to see because when Storm Collectibles started doing the Mortal Kombat figures, they were so faithful to the designs. I was thinking, yeah, but there's no way they could do Mortaro because that's just too big, too ridiculous. Giant horseman. Oh no, they've done it. <laughs> and they did a really good job with it as well. He's so big. They literally looked at the design and went, okay, let's, let's just make it as it is. And they did, and it works. And he comes with a bloody skeleton that he's ripped out of someone's body because if you're gonna have a fatality, <laughs> that's the way you do it. Yeah, this guy's a lot of bonkers fun. One of those action figures that you never thought you'd get, but we did. Mezco Batman, I only want to have one iconic version of every character. That's kind of my caveat for collecting. And this version of Batman for me, this ticks all the boxes. I, I love Mezco, I, I love their soft goods. And with this Batman, they've done what I think they do best, which is they've taken the design and then they've added things to it so that their style looks better. There's a lot more detail, more panels and piping and armor plating and stuff. So it doesn't look like he's just wearing pajamas. So that's what makes him really come to life. Then with a whole bunch of accessories, beautiful wired cape and all the different points in between, for me, this is still my ultimate Batman. Marvel Legends HasLab Galactus. What else is there to say? The ultimate Marvel legend, arguably the ultimate action figure. They always pitched HasLab as dream projects. This is how you make dream projects happen. And sometimes you'll think, mm, is this 
this a dream project or is this just you nickel and diming us? With Galactus, nah, you, you needed to buy into the HasLab and you got your money's worth. I still love this guy so much. He's obviously, he's the centerpiece of my Marvel Legends display and he should be. He's everything that he needs to be. I could just gush over this guy for ages, but I'm trying to do a marathon video. So I'll just say, so wicked. Everything he needed to be, mwah, chef's kiss. Abomination from Select. You want to talk about figures that are just bricks? Yeah, you could build a house out of these. Just a solid chunk of plastic. So almost no practical articulation. Like, yeah, you can move the arms and legs, but not much. He really just needs to stand there looking intimidating. But guess what? He does look intimidating. He's the abomination. We still haven't had an abomination figure, I think, that really rivals this for both comic accuracy and gigantic badassery. And yeah, that is a word. I'm going to stick with it. This guy, this guy is that. Badassery. Here's a weird little oddity. Mars Attacks that came out before the Tim Burton film. So this is more of an extension of the original playing cards, but done in a 90s style. And what really caught my eye with this package is it comes with a floppy disk with video games on. And I thought this is such a wonderful time capsule of the early to mid 90s. I saw it at a Comic Con and I just thought I've never seen this before. And I don't know if I ever will again. It's so weird, kitsch, camp fun. I had to add it to the collection. Marvel Legends Retro Beast. Hank McCoy has honestly never looked better. Cloth goods on a Marvel Legend, that is rare. And it's not just that, they gave him the head sculpt that I think so many people wanted. Because the OG version of this character, he looked good, but he had the Jim Lee, rah, looking face. And we wanted cuddly scientist Hank McCoy. We've got him with his beakers and all the lab equipment as well. I got a lot of love in my heart for this beast. And now behold my Tengu warriors. Yeah, the Tengus, they're super fun. Not a big Power Rangers fan, but I just wanted this guy for my kind of anthropomorphic animal henchman type collection. And he's great in that regard. Just a super fun, silly figure and also harkens back a lot of 90s nostalgia. So I kind of love him. Toys? You tried to fight me with toys. Bane. The first time I ever saw Bane was in the animated series. And yeah, I just cottoned onto this guy like a baby bird. I thought this is the coolest Batman villain. And now McFarlane have really done him, done him justice with this mega figure. Now you can argue again, too big, really. And he, he is. I mean, Bane should be a, a, a large human being who's just wide, roided up on Venom. He's not eight foot tall, but hey, sometimes when you want a badass Bane figure, you got to make a few compromises. So even with him being a little bit too gigantic, I still absolutely love him. I'll pair him up with my Marvel Legends Captain America, recreate Marvel vs. DC. That's a happy time for me. You will die. Storm Mortal Kombat. Yeah, it is Storm. I almost corrected myself for no reason. Storm Mortal Kombat. Shao Kahn. Wow, my brain's misfiring. It doesn't really matter. You don't need me to say anything. Just, just look at the wicked action figure. <laughs> he looks badass, but there are some big problems with him as well. He's, he's fine, but his, his rubber helmet doesn't really sit very well on his head because the rubber's kind of springy and it, it doesn't really want to stay put. And then he's got his shoulder pads, which if they pop off of his straps, good luck ever putting them back. I, I just had to glue them because, yeah, they, 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 they weren't going to go. So there's a few little caveats there. And they've done a new version now. And oh my goodness, that's one heck of an upgrade. But the OG one, at the time, it was still the best Shao Kahn you were ever going to get for your money with a huge big throne as well, looking like a badass. There's still a lot to love, even with a few flaws. The HasLab Sentinel. Oh my goodness, what kicked off the Marvel Legends HasLabs and what a way to start. Set the bar pretty darn high. A dream project that you can base your entire X-Men display around, as I did. My only disappointment is that I didn't have the money or the space to get more than one because I would have. This, this thing is just so badass. With the different battle damaged parts as well, you can have more than one and it makes such a dynamic display. And Dave, stop talking about what you don't have because you ain't never going to get it. <laughs> but just the one alone? Yeah, absolutely awesome. Archangel, deluxe Archangel. One figure that I really want to see an upgrade of because I always thought the 
badass version of Warren Worthington, Horseman of Apocalypse. It was just the coolest thing in the world. The annoying thing with this though was he had five different heads and none of them I felt really worked for me. A lot of them were repaints, or at least one of them was. One of them was the Adam Warlock head. And then some of the other ones, I just, it, it didn't quite grasp me the way I wanted it to. I'd love to have the, the blue costume with the white going down the center and more of a heroic blue skin, blonde hair, flowing in the breeze kind of look. You know what I'm talking about. In the meantime though, still a nice looking figure and a great job with the wings. They nailed those. Love Triangle Wolverine. Man, I've, I've owned a lot of Wolverines over the years. This Love Triangle three pack was a real sneaky one from Hasbro. It was the only way to get a Jean Grey at the time. But if you already owned a Wolverine and a Cyclops, well, pfft, too bad, you're buying them again. At least the Cyclops had a bomber jacket and the Wolverine had some new accessories like bone claws, baby. Give me anything that's a reference to the 90s. In this case, gnarly looking bone claws. That'll put it over the top for me. I still kind of like this one. 80th anniversary Captain America for the longest time. The best Captain America figure with that wonderful Alex Ross looking design. Since then, he has been surpassed, I feel, by the 20th anniversary one, which is just a beautiful, bright, bold reinterpretation of this. But still, this one, if you want a slightly darker color scheme, maybe looking a little bit more meaner, this is great. It's still an awesome cap. Yeah, I got a lot of love lot for this. I'm not going to retake that, but yeah. I do have a lot of love for it. Machine Man. This was one of those figures that made me realize and think to myself, you know what, Dave? Maybe we're buying too many Marvel Legends. I mean, it's perfectly nice, but I've never read anything with Machine Man in. I just saw a pretty figure and I was like, well, it's a Marvel Legend. I've got to get it. That's what 2020 did to us. The Hood, or as Ryan Ting said in his reveal, the angry Marvel Legends fan. <laughs> we don't forget. <laughs> Nonetheless, though, it's, it's ridiculous. It, it's, it's a failure as a Hood figure because the face, even though it's amusing with its angry expression, doesn't look anything like the Parker Robbins character. And also the biggest failing is that he can't actually stand with his, his hood is too long. So if you stand him, his hood hovers kind of over his head, but touches the floor because it's too big. Bit of a swing and a miss there. Nonetheless though, it's become kind of a cult favorite figure. So he definitely warrants an inclusion on this list. Armored Daredevil. This was on my wish list for the longest time because it just screams 90s to me, especially as crossovers with Spider-Man. But I thought, ah, it's unlikely we're ever going to get that. It's a very obscure... Oh, they've done it. And not only that, but they did it really well with great, unique sculpting, beautiful cherry red metallic paint and an extra Matt Murdock head. They went all in with this guy, and I really love the, the results of it. It's, it looks really cool. So much nostalgia. Retro Spider-Man. These days, there are tons of different Spider-Man action figures out there from Marvel Legends, but for a while, it was pretty much just Pizza Spider-Man. And he was good, but he was very hard to come by because everyone wanted a Spider-Man. And then they finally did Retro Spider-Man and all was right with the world. Since then, he's been improved upon and upgraded. But when this guy first came along in the beautiful card back packaging, it was the start of a new wave of Retro Spider-Man figures. And man, us Spidey fans, we've been eating well ever since. And now it's time for J. Jonah Jameson. And he wants pictures of that menace Spider-Man. Any excuse to do JJ. I wasn't even going to include this figure. I just, I just wanted to do the voice. But while I am, I mean, again, it's one of those characters that you wouldn't have necessarily thought Hasbro would do. And even if they did, would they have put that much work into it? Because it's just a civilian character. What, what kid in the toy store wants an old man? Probably not many, but us old men do. And especially that he comes with so many fun accessories, like an actual Daily Bugle that has articles with photos of Marvel Legends telling the stories. I love that. Really clever innovation, Hasbro. Double thumbs up. Eddie Brock Venom. This is a very Eric Larson looking Venom. Some people could say that it's Todd McFarlane as well. Take your pick. Also known as, I think, the killer whale Venom. It's because of the face, the, the shape of the Venom face. But really, it's not an essential Venom figure. It's a bit of an oddity, but it's kind of fun. And hey, look, I kind of fell into the trap of just buying every Venom figure. So that's why this guy's here. 
Gwen Stacy a beautifully realized civilian character. And at first, when I began collecting, I thought, oh, they're not going to do civilian characters. But over that time, we've had Gwen Stacy, Mary Jane, J. Jonah Jameson, and even an Aunt May. So even though I rag on Marvel Legends, the one caveat that we always say is, hey, look, we get the characters that you wouldn't expect to see. And with Gwen Stacy, they actually did a really beautiful job with her, too. Pizza Spider-Man, an absolute classic. One of the most sought after legends when I first started collecting. I think the one I got was a knockoff. I just bought it off AliExpress or something, but hey, I got a Pizza Spider-Man. And for a long time, he was the only one that was available. So dang it, I was happy to have him. Retro Scarlet Spider. I'm so happy that my boy Ben Riley got a lot of love and representation in the Marvel Legends line. We just recently got a beautiful new one. However, the older, OG one, yeah, with the Pizza Spider-Man body, but then the extra sculpting with the hoodie. They did a great job with him. Throwing in a blonde Ben Riley head with the retro version. Yeah, that one's that one's a real winner. I still I still dig it. Even with the upgrade, I still got a lot of love for the OG. Compound Hulk, because why the heck not? You gotta get some more use out of that Hulk body. I mean, this guy appeared for one comic book where the Impossible Man blipped them together to fight. I can't even remember who it was. Was it Zenmu? It might have been Zenmu. Who cares? I really didn't need to buy this. Uh, another example of why I shouldn't be allowed money. Professor X. Well done, Marvel Legends. Putting this out with your Riders line. What a great use for that kind of subgenre of action figures. Beautifully realizing his 90s chair. This screams 90s X-Men, the cartoon. And actually, involuntarily, I had the tune playing in my head while I was talking about it. That's the power of action figures, baby. Brown Costume Wolverine. I think this is the retro version that I've got. And it's a really great representation of that costume. Even though Wolverine's had a million different looks over the years, the two main ones are his classic tiger stripe look and the yellow and tan. So if you're gonna have two Wolvies, it's gotta be these ones. And I think we're long overdue an upgrade of this costume. Hopefully we might be seeing it soon. It is his 50th anniversary after all. And now the amazing Nightcrawler. This was a fantastic figure because he came with three different heads, a saber, a whole bunch of hands. They went ham on this Nightcrawler, a really great addition to the X-Men team. Dr. Octopus. We've had a few Dr. Octopies since this guy, but this dude really set a fantastic standard with a whole new portly body just for him. I think it's only been used for one other character, that being Frogman. Help me out if there is another one. And then, of course, a few other remakes with Doc Ock. But this one... He's so, so good. Bendy Wire Tentacles would have put this over the end. They added that later. But still, just as a representation to have one of Spider-Man's greatest villains on the display, yeah, this dude was a real winner. The Lizard Builder figure, the, the T-Rex Lizard, Dino Lizard. A lot of people didn't like this because he's not a classic looking lizard. But for me, I want my figures looking bigger and badder and meaner. And this guy fits all those ex descriptions and examples. I really regret selling them. <laughs> that one's on me, but hey, at least I got the footage to look at and torture myself with. <laughs> <laughs> Jubilee, straight bang out of the 90s with the bright yellow trench coat, the gloves, the big pink Bret Hart style sunglasses. This is every 90s mall kid, at least what every 90s mall kid looked like in a Saturday morning cartoon. So I think she's really sweet. She, she is what brings your Jim Lee X-Men collection to life. I love what they did with her. Nimrod, a character that you could argue maybe we wouldn't have got or we wouldn't have thought we were going to get because it's such an unusual, chonky design that could be difficult to translate into action figure form. And I'm sure it was because he's very limited in articulation. You can't really move him about a huge amount. But then again, it's Nimrod. You don't need to move him about very much. He just needs to stand there looking stoic and terrifying on the shelf, which is exactly what he does. Then with the white and pink colors, it's very unique. So he, he really does stand out. So that's great. I, I'm really liking what they did with this guy.
MAS-01 Optimus Prime. You want to talk about the ultimate Optimus Prime? This thing is crazy. Just look at the size of him. He's huge. He's almost kind of 1 12th scale. So you can put him with your G.I. Joes, your classifieds, and it kind of works. But the fact that he has so much great articulation going on, he's got light up effects as well. He's got ratchets in all of his joints, so you can really pose him in dynamic sort of positions. Optimus Prime is always going to be one of my favorite heroes in the world. And this is such a great kind of modernized version of him because it's, it's the classic Prime look, but then with modern stylings and more detail. That's, that's so great. When I saw a picture of this, I fell in love with it and I was like, I got to get it. I don't know where or how, but I got to get it. And I did. And I was so happy. Omega Red, again harkening back to my 90s childhood, reading the comics in X-Men when he first appears, and then in Children of the Atom as well, throwing him in with the animated show. Omega Red's got so much nostalgic cachet that I was bound to like him anyway. And then when we got a really good figure who's big and chunky and chonky with the carbonadium tendrils coming out and a mean looking face, yeah, that's doing Omega Red justice. 3-0 MDLX Bumblebee. This guy is just the cutest little robot. I adore this. I got Prime initially. That was my first 3-0 MDLX Transformer. And I thought, oh, maybe I should get Bumblebee to go with him. And just looking at the intricate detail, it's one thing to have the articulation and the detail on the larger robots, but then you've got everything condensed down into this little yellow guy. It's amazing what they put into it. And the whole package together, it just, it, it's wonderful. The ultimate little desk toy fidget kind of pocket sort of figure, but I wouldn't put him in my pocket because he's far too delicate and valuable. Instead, I'll put him on the shelf and just look at him going, golly, you're cute. And now we got Mrs. Grimm's ever-loving blue-eyed thing, straight from Yancey Street. This still stands as one of the best Marvel Legends ever made. I think a lot of people still rank this very highly in their ranking, I guess. Because he's just exactly what the thing needed to be. This is the Walgreens exclusive. And just the size and the heft alone is doing this guy justice. That's just, which is why they've reused this body multiple times, because... They nailed it. Then with the beautiful paintwork with a dark wash really bringing him to life. Yeah, Ben Grimm's never looked better. Retro Kingpin. Oh my goodness, when we got the Kingpin Builder figure, I loved it. But I thought to myself, ah, oh, if only they had him in his old retro gear though, with the, the cravat and the purple pants, just make him look more popping. And once again, Hasbro are like, what's that? You want us to, you want us to, to charge you money for something we kind of, sort of already have? Okay, but I don't mind it because this is beautiful. This is the retro kingpin that I always wanted. He's huge, but then again, the kingpin should be. I think this is just wonderful. A real centerpiece for your retro Spider-Man display. Build a figure Sandman. Oh, this one cost me a pretty penny when I started collecting because I was a day late and a buck short, but I'm so glad that I got him because this is still the best Sandman figure out there. I feel, I love the great different hand sand effects that he could have, whether it's the sledgehammer or the spike ball or just the coming to get you kind of claw, the, the great mashed up battle damaged face, so much cool stuff. The only thing that would have just tipped it over the edge would have been if he had some kind of like sand effects on his legs as well. But you know what? I'll look past it because this is still my favorite, favorite version of Flint Marco. Scarlet Spider Kane. This is one that was difficult to get hold of. It's quite a basic figure, but it's very bold. The, the red and black, it, it pops. And they went quite hard with it as well, because you've got two different heads. You've got an unmasked head, but it's a shame because it's a weird sort of sickly color because it's like a carrion virus version of the unmasked head. But he's also got his cool stinger spikes coming out of his wrist. And I love the Deadpool style eyes that they put on the mask that are very expressive. Like he's kind of squinting and looking at something. This is a cool version of Kane. I just, just wish we had 90s Kane. Maybe one day. The equine something or other. I forget his name, but from Four Horsemen Studios, Mythic Legions. I saw this guy in a secondhand shop in Osaka and I was like, 
I've always wanted one of those horses that I've seen online that people have, but they're going for crazy amounts of money. This dude in a bric-a-brac store, I thought, okay, no, we gotta jump on this. And I'm glad I did. He really shows his age in various regards, limited articulation. He doesn't have a bicep swivel, no interchangeable hands. He's just got his gripping hands. There's a lot of stuff that makes you think, okay, this feels like an old figure. But still, from a distance, just looking at him on your shelf, it's still like a zombie skull horse warrior. That alone is going to buy you a whole lot of credit. So by adding him to my kind of Shao Kahn monster squad, yeah, he fits right in. Retro Doctor Doom, oh my goodness, this is a beautiful set this guy came with. The Super Scroll version of Doom I think a lot of people prefer because he's more dark and stoic and badass, but I like this bright popping colourful doom. Also, very rare, got some cloth goods on a Marvel legend. We don't get many of those to the pound. So seeing that with the different heads, all these different character effects as well, he's got his spell books and swirly whirly stuff. He's, he's my favourite doom for now. But then again, I got the Mezco waiting for me back home in England, so he will be replaced. But for now, he's still wicked. You weak, pathetic fool. Shao Kahn version 2. We got the upgrade, baby. So of course it's not the more iconic Mortal Kombat 2 design, but it's the much more elaborate, zhuzhed up Mortal Kombat 9 or 10. Is it 10? Redesign? Whichever game it's from, I love it because it, it fixes. It fixes all the problems that the initial one had. He's got a more solid helmet, he's got more clearance with his neck, so you can put it on there and it stays there. And the eye holes line up with the eyes, it makes so much more sense. The shoulder pads fit beautifully, and that throne. Oh my goodness. I'm very lucky, just by chance, that it just happens to fit perfectly in my display. Actually, hang on, look, look, you, you can see it. Uh, there, 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 there he is, look, you can see, boom. It just, it works. There you go, I'm pointing at him now. That, just, what a display that is. I'm, 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 I'm loving this guy. So I don't need the rest of the Mortal Kombat line. I've got this Shao Kahn and that alone, <laughs> that does it for me. This guy's wicked. Retro Lizard. Long-term fans of the show will know that when it comes to this figure, I broke the first rule of action figure collecting. What's that? Don't play yourself. What did I do? I played myself. Because I heard rumblings that this was going to be released, so in advance I sold my Lizard Builder figure because I thought, haha, I'll sell him while he's still expensive, then we're going to get a nice repainted version of it, aren't we? No, we're not. We're going to get a brand new one that I don't like as much. Dang it! The good news is though that over time I've come to actually really like this figure because it is honestly Marvel Legends at their best. Brand new sculpt, two different heads with very distinct looks, extra hands, accessories with the beakers. There's a whole lot to love here. So genuinely this figure has really grown on me. Just like an extra arm on a mad scientist. Yeah, I kind of dig him now. I am the rocks of the eternal shore. Crash upon me and be broken. Okay, that wasn't a very good animated apocalypse voice, but this is a pretty good animated apocalypse action figure. He's not perfect. I feel that the highly detailed face, then with the very matte finish paintwork on the body, doesn't quite blend very nicely. However, the, the morphing laser gun hand, yeah. I really dig that. So pairing him with your Archangel and actually some of the newer animated series X-Men characters, yeah, put those together, come on. You know you gotta pose your animated rogue with this apocalypse in a certain diorama type position that always harkens to our minds when we think about the goodness of the X-Men cartoon. Yeah, you're picturing it. <laughs> this apocalypse is kind of fun. I would have waited an eternity for this. Genuinely, I mean, it's worth waiting an eternity for. This Megatron, 1 12th scale almost, pretty much. So just like the, the size alone. MAS-02 is like the code name for him, but he's just, he's glorious. Having him with Prime together, it's, it's the ultimate action figure display, baby. It's the classic look for Megatron, but then just zhuzhed up and made a little bit more modern with some more details just to accentuate the badassery. And badassery, that's what this guy is rocking. 
Bug Dude. I, I can't remember his name. He comes in a two-pack with Anthrax. I remember Anthrax, but there's also him. And I love both of the characters that come in this two-pack because they're just so beautifully bonkers. This guy, this crazy mutated fly cockroach exterminator, just so weird. And it's that kind of classic 90s gross kids kind of humor design going on there. Really dig it with awesome articulation as well. I sold off my Ninja Turtles animated display, but I had to keep this guy because he's so weird and bright and bold and colorful. I just, I absolutely adore the ugly little dude. Shiva from Storm Collectibles. Say what you will about Storm Collectibles Mortal Kombat line, and I often do, but when they decide to do the whole line of figures, they went all in and they did the full sizes and proportions, just like Mortaro and Kintaro. They said to themselves, hey look, we've committed to this scale, we're gonna make all these characters and we're gonna make them work, and Shiva works. The, the articulation and the sculpting and the work that's gone into it, it's a brilliant realization of the character. Just a bit of a shame, I find that, honestly, if I, I might seem a little crass saying it, but she's got a bit of a pancake butt. I don't like characters that are wearing thongs, but there's no, there's no cheeks together. It's just like flat over the top, and it just doesn't look like, that, that's not what a human body would look like with a thong. I, I, I could show you if you like. No, I, I won't show you but it just looks a little bit awkward, a little bit odd. But hey, maybe they didn't want to make it too cheesecakey. They wanted to be a bit more respectable. And I'm like, but, but, but I don't want to be respectable. We ain't ever gonna be respectable. But all of that terrible nonsense griping notwithstanding, she's a very well-realized figure. Null, the god of the symbiotes. Again, Marvel Legends doing what they do best. A brand new character, all new sculpt, two very specific, different looking head sculpts. I really, really dig it. It's only a shame that the wings that came with Venom couldn't be ported into the back of him as well, because there is some art here and there where he does grow his own symbiote wings as well. So having that as a full on design, that would have been chef's kiss. But even without that, what we do get from Null, I think it's a perfect realization of the character. So yeah, Hasbro kind of knocked it out of the park with this one. Hawk P40. This was one of my first Mezco figures. When I saw the promo pictures from this guy, I was like, I love this. It, it's bonkers, but that's why I love the Rumble Society, because they go a little bit crazy. It's this, this B-52 bomber shark helmet with this wonderful, I love his, his bomber jacket as well with the fur, and then a huge big gatling gun. He's just great. So much to love, and this was what really made me fall in love with Mezco toys. Just the artistry, the detail. Yeah, th th this guy's phenomenal. I, I still love him. Venom from the Null 2-pack. This was one that a lot of people wanted when we got the movie Venom. We said, oh, you could repaint this into a really good comic book one. And Hasbro were like, what's that? You want to pay us to repaint something? Okay. But they didn't just repaint it, they stuck huge big wings on his back as well. So you get a bit of bang for your buck there. Some people didn't like the fact that this Venom has toes. I don't mind that, it makes sense logically. If the symbiote is not pretending to be a costume anymore, why wouldn't it have toes? But that's me, I'm a toe bro, clearly. But this figure, he's kind of nice. Tony! <laughs> Ironmonger. MCU Ironmonger. Probably the only MCU character on this list. But Hasbro built this thing in a cave out of scraps! Actually, they probably didn't. They had some very good resources behind them. And it shows, because this, this is a great looking action figure. You can happily, easily chuck it in your 616 display as well. Fits right in. I love the Gatling gun with the bullets falling off the side and the blast effects. They really nailed this. NSC! Wow! Wow machine! Wow machine! Two different flavors of War Machine, both of them awesome. Me personally, I love the deluxe one because you get more bang for your buck. But the super bright kind of pearlescent white and black one from the Marvel vs. Capcom sort of look, that does sing to me. I know it's not exactly the Marvel vs. Capcom design, that came out later, but still with the bright popping colors, I got a lot of love for it. Honestly, both of these are excellent, excellent action figures. SH Figure Arts Carnage. Now look, Let There Be Carnage is an awful, terrible garbage movie, but this Carnage figure, 
oh my goodness, when I have this in hand, I don't even think about the piece of cinematic trash it came from. I just look at what could arguably be called the ultimate carnage figure. I just love the way that he literally just looks like he's had his skin taken off and it's just muscle and sinew. That's what he's made out of with the, the sharp looking claws and the tendrils coming off of him. He looks vicious and nasty and being figure arts a well-made figure arts figure, because there are ones that aren't, he's fantastic. I absolutely adore everything that's gone into putting him together. The articulation, the posability is wicked. I originally didn't want to get him for my Marvel collection because he's a bit too big. Because in the movie, they made him big and gigantic for some reason, because I guess that's just what's better, isn't it? It's like, oh, what are we going to make for the villain? Well, let's do Venom, but bigger. Jeez Louise. But now in the comics, Carnage changes size so much, you could have him being tall and terrifying and dominating the rest of the action figures. That doesn't matter. So now that I've got him on my shelf, he's my go-to Carnage. I love him. Alex Ross Iron Man. I love an Iron Man armor with a jaw. I, I don't know why. It doesn't even necessarily make that much sense anatomically. Why does the faceplate need a jaw? I don't know but it looks really cool. So this figure, because it's just two colors, it could arguably look like a little bit flat, like a bit of a, bit of a wash or like some detailing would have helped it a little bit, but only a little bit. So it doesn't need much help because it's still a really nice design. Alex Ross, you, you might've made for me personally, my favorite Iron Man armor. Select Hulk, my ultimate version of the Jade Giant, especially when you're pop the t-shirt from the animated, not animated, 80th anniversary Hulk on there. I'm not going to redo that because those things combined, it looks great. Hulk is so big and green that you want something to break up the paintwork a little bit. And that's where the 80th accessory works really well with that. But even without that, he's just so huge and imposing. I dig him so much. You can argue he's a little bit too big for your Marvel Legends scale, but come on, it's the Jade Giant. You can fudge that. So yeah, I absolutely love this version of the Hulk. Baron Zemo. This is the Zemo that I really wanted because this for me is my OG Thunderbolts Baron Zemo. I know that this look existed beforehand, but this is what I associate because I loved that first initial couple of years of the Thunderbolts starting in 1997, I think, when Baron Zemo revealed that it was him under the Citizen, Z Citizen B mask easy for me to say. I thought that was such a great twist and I don't think it's been topped. Not that I can, you know, off the top of my head think about. And this action figure would, was, uh, it did it justice. <laughs> I'm, I'm gobbling my words here, but I get excited about things that I like. The only caveat is that he's got this big wrestling championship style belt around his midsection, which does limit his articulation a lot. But you know what? I can look past that because the rest of this, it's great. Psycho Man. I do love that he's a completely new, fresh sculpt. I mean, you can't really reuse anything to make this guy. I feel the colors are a little bit plasticky. It, it, it feels a, a bit plain. I mean, heaven forbid that my toy feels like a toy, you know what I'm saying? But the Fantastic Four villains are very underrepresented, I feel. So it's good to see this guy come along. Chasm. Behold the fall of Ben Riley in Marvel Legends style. This is a real love-hate figure because I hate the direction that they took Ben Riley, making him a villain and making him crazy and just unlikable. But also, I kind of love the design. And I love the idea of a spooky kind of Spider-Man. So there's all these good things in there that I kind of resonate with. And I also have to accept that this is the only Ben Riley that we're going to get in the comics now. So if you can't get on board, then you might as well go without. So I'm going to try and embrace it. And it's easy to embrace when the costume does look cool. This is a real bare bones Marvel Legends figure, though. They were, they were nickel and diming on this one. They were on the whole line this guy came from, to be honest, actually. They were really penny pinching. No extra hands, no weapons, no extra heads, nothing. Just a couple of the little swirly power effects, which they just put out with everything. But all of that notwithstanding, he's still very striking on the shelf. And sometimes it's just about enough. Agent Anti-Venom. I'm a big Anti-Venom fan. I'm a big Flash Thompson fan. So this made me very happy. Probably one of the last action figures from Hasbro in the Marvel Legends line to have the ball, the ball joint 
hips. And a lot of people don't like that, and I understand it. But with the anti-venom armor and costume, there's so much going on that it disguises them very, very well. So as far as repaints go, this one was a winner. Say what you will about Marvel Legends, and Lord knows I do sometimes, we get some brilliantly obscure characters. And Frogman, oh my goodness, he was an instant fan favorite because he's so silly. He's got the great portly Dr. Octopus body, then with the ridiculous Frogman head with the little eyes peeking out of the mouth. Yeah, he's just adorable. Stealth Iron Man, such a basic action figure, but with that midnight blue metallic paint job, then with the little red accents that just pop off of him, he's gorgeous. I really love him. Venomized Miles Morales. This was just a real bare bones figure. I, I, did it come with any accessories? Maybe a different hand? I mean, it feels like a little bit of a wave filler, to be honest. His face, his mask design, it looks a little bit sort of amphibian-ish, a bit froggy. It's, it's, it's a weird little figure. I don't hate it, but I don't really like it either. But you had to buy him to get Venom Pool, so that kind of justifies it. Nuke. Oh, what a great action figure. Marvel Legends, you took a character that's, I mean, D-list, to be fair, to Nuke, and you threw everything at him. Two different heads, so he's got the great USA flag on his face, but then he's got the ripped away, bald Terminator look. That's awesome. But then he's got this great flak jacket as well, which you can repurpose on so many different figures. I put uh, a spare one on my uh, crossbones figure. That works really well. He's got a removable knife. He's got his big gun and grenades. So much love went into this random character. That's, that's when Marvel Legends shine. Toxin, deluxe toxin. This was a figure that I was trying to will into existence and then it happened exactly how I wanted it. We had a real basic bare bones toxin years ago, but I loved the monstrous hideous design from the later Agent Venom comics. And this is exactly what Hasbro gave us. The only caveat is that if he had more paint on his tendrils, his little Audrey two mouths coming out the back of him, that would have just been the icing on the cake. But even without that, this is a great fun monster character. The Mad Titan Deluxe Thanos. I know that I'm very happy with my Mezco Thanos on Mezco Thanos Island, but you guys who are more classic OG Marvel Legends collectors, you couldn't ask for a more perfect Infinity War, Jim Stalin type Thanos. This thing, absolutely perfection. Just, just your perfect Marvel Legends Thanos, they really, really knocked it out of the park with this one. Old Man Logan, who also came with Old Man Hawkeye. This two-pack together, really beautiful sculpting on here. These two figures feel more like G.I. Joe Classifieds figures, I feel, because there's just so much detailing going on with the costumes, how intricate they are. I love the duster Western cowboy coat on Logan. It's a really nice set, and this is a great version of Old Man Logan. Grey Hulk, first appearance Hulk. I, I love this version of the Jade Giant, more so than the recent one that they put out. I feel he's just got more detailing going on in his face. It's real dark, recessed, washed paintwork, and he just looks like that Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, Frankenstein's monster type version of the Hulk. I really, really dig it. Essentially kind of a repaint. They've used this body many, many times, but hey, look, it, it works. It works real well. So I got a lot of love for this. Silver Samurai, another Marvel legend that is a character that you thought, oh, I mean, are they going to invest much money? He's, he's not a very popular character. Well, guess what? They did. They really did. This is one that I think gets forgotten about. You look at this figure, there's so much work that's gone into it. They have painstakingly recreated this incredibly elaborate samurai armor with little drawstrings that tie things together and it's it's just gorgeous it's a work of art and it just instantly makes me think of marvel superheroes and children of the atom that's what i was trying to think of children of the atom so big bang of 90s nostalgia black knight an obscure character that came with so much 
three different heads, all so unique. That was what was really great. He was a little hard to come by for a while. With the chainmail fish scale type armor as well, a really great complete version of an action figure that not a huge amount of people might have requested. He's not one of your Wolverines or Iron Mans, but my goodness, they really worked hard with this. Skullbuster, a great little army builder to an extent, or at least you can build two different characters, because he's got the other head as well. I forget the name, but the more sort of black mask looking one. But just like Nuke, they have so much detail going on with his, his jacket and all his weapons and armaments. I love the little visor and the helmet. Just a lot of love that's gone into this, again, rather obscure Wolverine villain. This is one of those things where when I see it, I'm like, dang it, Marvel Legends, when you get it right, you really get it right. Such heroic nonsense. 3DLX Megatron. Not just any Megatron, but the comic book UK Transformers color version. This, this, I just, I adore it. I knew I had to get a Megatron as soon as I started getting all of these figures, but what flavor to go for? And honestly, it was by necessity. That was the only one available, but you know what? I'm kind of glad it was. When the decision is taken out of your hands, you love the one you're with, as Luther Vandro once said. Now the other ones, the bright green and purple one, that's kind of fun. And the OG, it's the OG, but I like the different kind of color breakups this one has. And just seeing him there with the gigantic cannon and the beautiful sculpting and design, oh, he's just oh, so badass. Living laser, it's just exactly what it is. It's just a bright pink lollipop of an action figure, but he's so vibrant. I love something that just radiates when it's on the shelf. You can't help but catch him with your eye and it's like, huh, it's a living laser. <laughs> he's bonkers and I kind of love it. Bastion from the HasLab Sentinel. So that was one of those ones that you can get a little bit, mm, bit irksome with where it's like, if you want this one character, you gotta buy an entire HasLab, but you know what? Yeah, they, they do fit together, so it does kind of make sense. And this Bastion, for me, it's it's 90s nostalgia. Again, after Onslaught, I feel like the X-Men were like, okay, where are we gonna go? What are we gonna do? And the next big thing was Operation Zero Tolerance, and the next big bad was Bastion. And this, this is a cool realization of that character. Hammerhead, a relatively modern Marvel legend that I think harkens back to more classic Marvel Legends, where they take a character who's not massively popular, but they put a lot of work into him. Love the face sculpt. And the fact that he's on a bespoke, bigger, heftier, more intimidating body. And then little things like the knuckle duster with the engraving on there. A lot of little nuances went into this figure to really bring him to life. Space Venom Wave Hobgoblin. This, this was one of the more expensive Marvel Legends I bought when I started collecting because I wanted Roderick Kingsley or Jason McIndale whichever version of Hobgoblin you prefer. And this, you can have either because he's got the, 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 the gnarly looking Demo Goblin type head as well. So much work in this. I really, really love it. This is still my go-to Hobgoblin figure, especially with the Toy Biz Glider as well, the little kit, kit bash there. Yeah, I've, I've, I've got a lot of love for this Goblin. Retro Hobgoblin. This was one that kind of irked me because a lot of people were desperate to get the Hobgoblin because it was hard to come by. And then they do this new one and it's a real downgrade, I feel. They've taken a lot away. They've lost the fish scale armor. He's not got as detailed a paint job. He doesn't have the alternate face. And it's like, ah, oh, we've, we've lost something. And the argument was, oh, but we're doing it in the animated style. And it's like, are you? Because his glider doesn't look animated, it looks like you're doing it in a cheaper style, which you're justifying by saying it's animated when it's really not. So yeah, this one kind of ruffled a few feathers, mine included. Deluxe Punisher, the most kind of gritty real world version of Frank Castle. Big old set with a motorbike as well. So many accessories. He's got the Norse helmet. He's got this great double barreled shotgun. All these different weapons. It's the ultimate version of a modern street level type Punisher. I love OG classic 90s kind of Frank with the bold skull and the black and white. But this more slick back hair, plaster on the nose beaten up Frank Castle. Yeah, he's he's quite a quite a piece. He's quite a piece. Don't know how it's gonna end that sentence. There you go. Don't think anyone's ever described an action figure like that. Yeah, that really is quite a piece. What am I talking about? 
Demo Goblin. Usually, if a builder figure is a regular sized character, that feels like kind of a letdown, but in this case, I'm willing to let it go because this version of Demo Goblin, first of all, 90s goodness, baby, maximum carnage goodness. I love, love, love this. The gnarliness of the face sculpt is so visceral. And then with the flaming goblin glider, Ah, oh, they just, oh, when you, when you make the character this good, I don't mind it being a regular size because it's worth buying the wave for. McFarlane's Shao Kahn. This is beautiful, man. Absolutely phenomenal. McFarlane just killed it with all the regal armor on this dude. Perfectly captured. I really, really liked the Shao Kahn redesign in the more modern Mortal Kombat games where they gave him that, I don't know, kind of Chinese type old style battle armor. I'm not a historian, but I do know what looks cool. And this looks cool and McFarlane just captured it to perfection. Really great work from the Toddster. Ultron, the Avengers big bad. I love this guy. And it's all down essentially to the Kirby crackle coming out of the mouth. It just brings this thing to life. It's a basic sort of size. I would have liked a slightly bigger Ultron, but also it does fit with classic artwork. And yeah, he just looks mean, menacing, and just, just coming to get you. And of course, you can army build the heck out of this. I've seen some amazing photography with like a thousand Ultron drones. What we need though, is a really scary deluxe Ultron Prime to kind of command them. Maybe one day. In the meantime though, this classic Ultron, he's great. Mark Bagley Carnage. I love Mark Bagley. I love 90s Carnage nostalgia. This is all of that. The Cletus Cassidy head is absolutely phenomenal. Just perfectly capturing the artwork style from Mark Bagley. Then with the huge scythe arm as well, that kind of pendulum blade. So wicked. Pure maximum Carnage nostalgia. The Red Skull. Marvel Legends doing what they do best. Two very distinct heads, a whole bunch of different hands, a great bespoke weapon with the Hydra logo, the pajamas type look that he wears. It fits the character. The only sort of caveat is that because the arms are so thick with the pajamas, like the, the elbow joint kind of is a bit segmented. It looks a bit odd, but you know what? I can look past it because my eyes aren't looking at the elbow joint. They're looking at all the other great stuff on there. And there's a lot to love. Age of Apocalypse Sabretooth. When they started doing the AOA line, this was a big one that I really wanted. And now you can pair him up with Wild Child as well. This body is the size and proportion that Victor Creed should be. Tall, hefty, chunky, intimidating. Love this figure, really cool. Riri Williams, beautiful artistry on the unmasked head sculpt. I think that was just expertly done. Then the completely original body to capture her Iron Man armor, throw in some blast effects, some smoke as well. They went all in with this and I really appreciate that. Civilian Peter Parker. This is kind of a mixed bag. I do like it because first of all, we get a civilian body, which is always nice. And the two Peter Parker head sculpts are fun, but kind of flawed as well. We got the great half and half Spider-Man mask one. I love that because that's so retro, so classic. But then we got the one with the glasses. And that looks really weird because the glasses are kind of painted over so they look like goggles. He looks more like a mad scientist than Peter Parker. Some clear lenses, that would have been much more effective. But that notwithstanding, I still kind of dig it. Rodimus Prime from 3-0. I, yeah, like all of them, I don't want to repeat myself, but I just adore these. There's so much detail. This is what Transformers should look like. This is what you can do when you take the transforming out of the Transformers. What do you got? You got a great looking robot mode. And this, even though it's Rodimus Prime, it's kind of hot rod. I mean, there's not a huge difference in the robot mode. And he stacks up so great with the other heavy hitters from the Transformers line. I am all in on this wave. And also, I don't resent Rodimus Prime, or Hot Rod for that matter. You know what? He was put in a difficult situation during the war for Cybertron, and he did his best, okay? Just, you know, not justice for Hot Rod, but credit for Hot Rod. At least he tried. Armadillo. Smooth on the inside, crunchy on the outside. That's a very British reference. And this Builder figure was a big surprise. I don't think anyone was expecting an Armadillo Builder figure. This was a really weird wave that he came with. A whole bunch of MCU No Way Home figures of characters that people weren't really after and a mismatch. It was, it, it was very odd. But Armadillo, they went 
ham with this. So much brand new, all original pieces put together for such a Z-list villain. But I mean, my goodness, that's why we love Marvel Legends, because they go deep into the archives and they'll put a lot of work into a crazy character like Armadillo. Cosmic Ghost Rider. Dude, I love this. I love the Cosmic Ghost Rider design. Just so many ridiculous, awesome things put together. Skull. Flaming Skull. Flaming Skull in a space helmet. Yeah, okay, throw him on a crazy cosmic bike with a flaming chain and laser guns. It's, it, it's bonkers, it's silly, it's stupid. And because of that, I think he's amazing. The name's Cable. He's from the future. Man, this, this is just the ultimate cable right here. Rob Liefeld style, all the pockets and pouches, the gigantic gun. I love the sculpted in eye sonic kind of flare as well coming off of him. This is when Marvel Legends, this is when they do it right. And they almost, they almost make a rod for their own back because they show what they can do when they really go all in on something. And this cable, they went all in on him and it really shows. Deluxe Venom, if you want your Venoms monstrous, this is the one to go for. For me, this is a bit too big. I like Venom being slightly smaller because that's more intimidating. You know, what's, it, what's scarier, being chased by a T-Rex or being chased by a Raptor? Because a Raptor, you don't know where it is. It could be right around the corner. This, this monster Venom, no, you, you're gonna know exactly where it is. He ain't hiding from nothing. And he's not gonna hide on your shelf either because he's gonna stand out and look big, bad, and intimidating. So that's kind of cool. 80th anniversary Thor. What a great version of the Thunder God this is. This is still the go-to Marvel Legends Thor, I feel, if you're looking for a classic design. The only problems I have with him are twofold. First of all, he has a very stoic face. It's just regal, posing for your high school picture type Thor. I want to have a grrr going into battle type Thor. And also his cape being a plastic cape, as they generally are, it's just kind of, you know, you can't really do anything with it. And having said that, I'll give you a third one. He doesn't come with a spinning hammer. If he had a battle, you were going into battle face with a spinning hammer and a more flowing cape, oh my goodness, you wouldn't be able to top this. 80th Anniversary Hulk, still my favorite Marvel Legends Hulk, with the best accessory, that shirt that goes over the top of him, it just breaks up all the green and makes him look more interesting, came in the Wolverine 2 pack and yeah, they've done different versions of the Hulk, they've done the 80th Anniversary one with the darker green and the different head, they've done the grey, they've done the red, they've done the split one, but this still I think is the best classic version of the Jade Giant. Modok, what a fantastic rap! random deluxe figure this was. The, is he the head of AIM or does he just work for AIM? Regardless of their structure, this is terrific. Two different faces and both of them so gnarly and ugly in, in a great way. It's like that little Ant-Man quote. He's disgusting. I love him. I, I love him. So bonkers. His little baby legs kicking out there and the jet, you know, the jet fire being used as a stand. This, this is just great. I don't even have a, an Avengers villain display, but I've still got MODOK because I can't better part with him. I just, I think he's so much fun. Amazing Yamaguchi Venom. Garbage the worst action figure I have ever bought, okay? I know that this countdown review list might get a little bit samey with me just gushing over every figure because, hey, I bought them, I must like them. No, not this. Trash, the worst of Yamaguchi. This thing falls apart, just with a stiff breeze. No, even a a gentle breeze just collapses under its own weight. The legs pop off, the torso pops off, the arms just bing, bing, it's just trash. It does not deserve to be sold as an action figure. And this idiot paid full price for it because I shouldn't be allowed money because that's what I do. I buy garbage sometimes. This is the only review this guy's gonna get, so I might as well just do it now. So if you'll indulge me, this is probably gonna be like a three hour video, so you might as well get comfortable. This thing is the worst use of plastic I have ever seen in my life. There's no point in making an action figure if it can't actually do the job of being an action figure, because there's no action. The minute you move anything, it just drops off and falls apart. He's got this head piece 
piece, which is a clever idea. You can change the eyes by removing the whole top of the head, it's just white underneath, but it won't stay in place. You have to balance this thing on two different stands, I've found, to actually get him to hold up, because there's just nothing, there's no load-bearing pieces of him. He just collapses under his own garbageness. I hate this figure so much. But I've still got him on my shelf though, because right now here in Japan, he's my only Venom. And the problem is that he actually visually looks good. I love the Eric Larson style design. That's what drew me to him initially, with the crazy tongue, the bonkers articulating jaw, the teeth, the crazy eyes. It's a real 1990s Venom. It's just a shame that it absolutely sucks. Storm Collectibles Kung Lao. This was actually one of the figures that kind of put me off buying more Storm Collectibles because he just, he feels really broad and kind of awkward and sort of chonky and his, his face doesn't look great and the legs feel kind of stiff and it was honestly when I got him I thought, you know what, maybe... Maybe they, they, they can't all be winners. Storm Collectibles have made some amazing Mortal Kombat figures. This, honestly, this is not one of them. Yeah, not one of their stronger efforts. Bullseye, Marvel Legends done right, baby. I love the unmasked head. The unmasked head with the actual carved in bullseye insignia. They could have just painted it or something. No, they carved that bad boy in. Then with the missing tooth as well, the maniacal eyes. So, so great. He's got a knife, he's got a gun that goes in his gun holster because that's what you put in a gun holster, a gun. Unlike when they re-released him with an empty holster because reasons, I don't know. The OG version though, this version, this guy rocks. Age of Apocalypse Colossus, a real fun builder figure for the second wave of the AOA. I don't know if we're ever going to get a third wave, it doesn't seem likely, but I'm just happy that we got what we got. This is a real distinct animated, is it Roger Cruz? Is it Ron Fens? Ah, oh, you all oh, help me out, I'm so bad with names, but it's essentially the art style. <laughs> of of uh, Age of Apocalypse Alpha. That's how Colossus looks, in my mind. And Age of Apocalypse Omega, for that matter. I do love it when Marvel Legends do a specific artist style, but it still fits with the other more generic characters. This is what this Colossus does. You can perch Kitty Pride on his back as well. It's a really fun set. Really makes me want to get more AOA figures. Maybe one day. King Shazam. This is an action figure that I was given as a sponsorship thing and I did a big shout out for the company and then they shortly went out of business. That's not on me. <laughs> But nonetheless, it's it's Shazam with, with Joker makeup. I, you know, McFarlane have their Jokerized versions and Marvel Legends have their Venomized versions. It's, it, it's you know, more ways of putting out characters. And even though I have no affinity for the character, I, I give credit where it's due. The, the sculpting and the paintwork, really impressive. Iceman from the Juggernaut wave. I love what they did with this because old school retro Iceman looks a little bit dorky, I think. This, this more modern version with the more sort of rocky kind of look to him with smooth shards and it feels like he is made out of ice as opposed to just a dude who is painted silver or whatever. Then with the hair as well, I love it. Unfortunately, he's one of the gummiest figures they've ever made. So I can barely even stand him up. I think, to be honest, his foot or one of his feet's hanging on by a thread. But I'd even let that go because I still think he looks wicked. Armored Batman, an early McFarlane figure from their DC Multiverse line and a very impressive representation of the Dark Knight style, what is it, Dark Knight Returns style Batman armor. Also kind of hearkening to the Batman vs Superman movie type armor. I mean, it's all the same essential design with a few little changes and caveats. And this is another one where McFarlane Toys did a really good job making a mechanical looking armored figure. He's big, heavy, chunky, chunky. I like what they did. Necker Ming the Merciless. Oh my goodness. This figure kind of came out of nowhere. I wasn't expecting to pick him up, but I saw him at a London Comic Con and I was blown away. So much work and detail. I mean, I shouldn't be surprised. It's Necker. But with the, the cloth cape as well, so many different weapons. He's got a staff, he's got a blaster that has like a laser you can fire out of it, and just the wonderfully nuanced, detailed face as well. And then such bright, 
popping pop art type colors on the armor. Yeah, this is still one of my favorite, favorite figures. A real gem. He's, he's awesome. Toy Biz Mojo. What Toy Biz did really well. Ah, you know what? I, I said Toy Biz. Now I'm not sure. Is it is it Hasbro? Don't, don't at me. You know this is that weird crossover period where it's it's difficult because Hasbro took over but they were using lots of old Toy Biz stuff. So, so don't at me in the comments, all right? But whoever made it, this Mojo Builder figure is just gory. Not gory, but gross. It's disgusting. And because of that, I love it. Because they just put so much work, like that paint job. You look at the, like, the amount of work in this paint job is breathtaking. They, they went all in and it shows and I'm, I'm really amazed by the work they did. So, so great. This, this mojo, he was difficult to top. We got a new one now. But even then, the old one, he still holds up. Really good stuff. He's not the vindicator or the victimizer or the ventriloquist. He is the violator. Do you remember that from the Spawn movie from like 1997? Not many people do, but it was an okay movie. No, it wasn't an okay movie. It was a pretty bad movie, but it had some good bits in it. And Jay Leguizamo playing the Violator, the clown, he was a highlight. And this figure from McFarlane Toys, that's also a highlight. McFarlane doing what they do best. Big, terrifying looking monsters. This, this is terrifying. It's not the classic lanky, skinny kind of Violator design. It's more of a Roydy Magoo Violator. But I, I still have him to this day because in the big monster type collection I have, this guy fits right in. Amazing Kyoto Revoltek Yamaguchi, whatever you want to call it, Thor, the ultimate God of Thunder. Arguably, I've always wanted to find my perfect Thor. The 80th anniversary Marvel Legends is fantastic, but he needs a raw looking face, which he doesn't have. And also he needs a flowing cape, which this one does. And he's got the raw face and so many others as well. And some awesome crackling lightning effects as well. Your mileage is gonna vary depending on whether or not you like the anime face. I actually quite like it. The only thing that he's missing is the spinning hammer. That would just, oh, just be the cherry on top. And also because I wanna fudge him in with all of my other Avengers characters from different lines like Mafex and Marvel Legends, he would do with being just just chotto, just just a, just a scotch little bit bigger. But you know what? I'm gonna have him in a flight stand, soaring into battle, so you can cheat that. So with all that considered, I really love him. Build a figure apocalypse. One of the Marvel Legends that convinced me to start collecting outside of Spider-Man, because really, I couldn't justify Apocalypse in a Spider-Man display. When have they ever interacted? Genuinely, tell me if they've ever interacted. I'd be interested. But I thought, no, I've got to get him. He looks incredible. Just the perfect realization of Ensabunur. With the metallic paint job, the great angry looking face. He's just wicked. I, I, I love him. I've, up, I've upgraded, or at least not upgraded, but changed him out for the select Apocalypse. But this big mean bad boy, he's still the bomb. The actual action figure that started model behavior, Ghost Rider. When I got this figure, I thought, you know what? I got to film a little review to just show some of my friends on the Facebook group. And when I did, I was like, huh, I, I kind of enjoy standing in front of a Age of Apocalypse Iceman. Oh, Iceman's never looked cooler than he did in the AOA with that flat, kind of face with you know, no features, looks kind of like a ninja, so wicked. But then with this action figure, they've done all the great sculpting of the ice shards and chunks. He looks like you're gonna either cut your hand or get frostbit touching him. With, with the lovely kind of frosting dry brush on there as well, then with the translucent plastic, this is, oh, I, 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 I love him. Ran right out of words, he's just, he's badass camera talking about action figures and the rest is history. So you might hate this figure <laughs> because of that. But man, just they they just captured him beautifully. All the flames, the the fire, the bike itself is terrific. So yeah, I, I adore this guy. I, I sold him because I really wanted the Mezco. So I needed to justify the price by going, okay, well, at least I can cover a lot of that by selling this one. Although honestly, I, I kind of regret it a little bit because even to this day, it's still a phenomenal Marvel legend.
Hercules, the man Hercules. What a great bonkers silly figure. Coming straight out of your local fetish bar. I just love it. They saw the most ridiculous version of the character and went, yeah, let's do that. And someone must have said, do you want to like put the skirt on him? No. <laughs> We want him in his pants. We want him in his pants and his fetish gear. And I'm like, yes, if you're gonna do it, go all in. They went all in with his big mallet. Again, two different heads with an angry face and a smiling, goofy face. I got so much love for this ridiculous thing. How does it feel, mighty Megatron? I love Starscream, the ultimate dick heel of the Transformers. And this is such a wonderful, wonderful representation of him. He's actually slightly bigger than any of the other 3DLX Transformers, so you could argue the scale isn't quite perfect, but still, I, I don't mind because he just looks so great. I don't know if I need the rest of, his, of the Decepticon jets. There's Thundercracker and Skywarp coming out, but I don't know, man. I mean, Starscream himself looks so great. I mean, two more of the same, that's just three times as awesome, right? Mezco Black Costume Spider-Man. This is an interesting one because it's, it's, it's kind of the worst of Mezco but also the best. The big thing is, you can see in this video, all of the pleather just, just, just peels away. It's, it's not fit for purpose, really. Mezco, you should hang your heads in shame for selling this. And people will say, look, it's not supposed to be articulated that much. Well, guess what? It shouldn't be able to articulate that much then. I know, I know. The reason I'm not too salty, actually, is because I bought it secondhand. It was very cheap because it was already peeling. So I thought, you know what? In for a penny, in for a pound, I might as well put him in a super Spider-Man-y type pose. Because, I mean, since it's a black costume, at a glance, you can't really tell. But looking up close, it's what you would call good from far, but far from good. But nonetheless, though, even though it's totally not fit for purpose, I'd never recommend anyone buy it. I still kind of like him. And folks, that does it for the ultimate marathon action figure review video. I hope you enjoyed this. This has been a, a bit exhausting, but also a whole lot of fun to look back through the archives and see all these different figures that have been bought and displayed and in many cases sold and replaced. It's, it's a great hobby, this is. I, it just, just kind of reminded me how much I love doing this. And if you enjoyed watching this, then you could give me the old thumbs up that would really help out the algorithm. And if you want to go one step beyond in supporting the channel, well, I got a sneaky little Patreon. You can click the link in the description below, toss a couple of bucks my way, and you can enjoy all the exclusive videos on there. Or you could get yourself a YouTube channel membership. So when I do the live streams, you got your name in the different colors there. I can see your comments. We can interact a little bit more. And that's about it, except for the channel sponsor into the AM, which was my motivation originally for doing this video. I thought, how can I get more clicks on this sponsor so that they keep sponsoring me? And this, this might do it, or it might not. Even if it doesn't, I've really enjoyed the process. But you can go over there by clicking the link in the description below. You get an extra 10% off your order, and they've got so many wicked designs to choose from. You're gonna find something you like. So gang, also, if you love model behavior, or even if you're generally indifferent to model behavior. We got a banging Facebook group that's about to hit 10,000. That's, that's really awesome. I'm so happy about that. You can go and join the model behavior Facebook group. I've got an Instagram as well. All the links are in the description below. All right, I'm exhausting myself from shilling. I'm gonna go sit down with a nice cup of tea. And until next time, keep displaying model behavior. <laughs>